everybody, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive here on Thursday, September 22nd. It is our Thursday night Stampin' Fun Night and we are live here on Facebook, not to cause confusion. I've been doing a lot of YouTube live videos this past week to help with the smooth transition of getting us over to uh, YouTube. Uh, my official goal to do that is October 4th. My first class that I'll be doing via YouTube Live is the Soft Seedlings class. So yay to that, you guys. We hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Whoop, whoop. So what does that mean? <laughs> we set another goal. <laughs> Hi, Carla Lake from Kentucky. Um, apparently that goal was way too easy. <laughs> Hi, Linda Bendick. Um, um, so we went for a stretch goal again, and I don't know if it's unreasonable, but I don't know why it wouldn't be because, hi Cindy Rentry, uh, because we have almost 3,000 Facebook followers, hi Holly Gentry, on Facebook, so I don't think it'd be too hard to um, get 1,500 on YouTube, especially if that's where I'm going to be moving to. We want to make sure that you're subscribed and uh, following with the notifications. Hi, Lisa Spacek and Barb Baylor uh, from Stephen City, Virginia. Whoop, whoop, Barb. I don't know if you saw my email, but I saw that you registered for the card making benefit and I replied with your registration so that you know I have you on the list. Yay. Hi, Donna McCarthy from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Hi, Sue Somerville. So, hi, Ethel King. So yeah, so that's the ultimate goal. And so when we hit 1,500 subscribers by October 31st, you guys, so we extended it a month and a week. Hi, Laura Sullivan. Hi, Vicki Tillett. Hi, Jean Terwilliger and Linda Hunt. Um, so we extended it by a month and a week. And so we're going to be setting that goal for October 31st. So, and when that happens, you guys, we're giving away two bundles. Yay. Hi, Elaine Rebeck. Hi, Jamie Tafoya. Hi, Kathy King from Oregon. So... Two is better than one, right? So we might as well um, go with that. <laughs> Hi, Sherry Martin. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. So we have the Rustic Harvest class tonight. Hi, Shirley Malarkey and Hildy. Uh, and we're gonna be making, actually, you guys, not four cards, but five. <laughs> Hi, Vicki Rodriguez. Um, yeah, I was looking through my card kits here. Hi, Linda Kester and Patsy Husson and Mary Jo McCulloch. There's Doral from California, Woohoo! So, hi, Ann Bellinger and Mary Hartman. Um, we're making five today, you guys. I realized that I made an extra of the um, mystery card night to put together with you. <laughs> hi, Cindy Bassett. Hi, Dee Serena. Hi, Linda Bailey. Um, so, yeah. So, we have uh, a fifth card to do tonight. Hi, Stacey Burns. Um, so, <laughs> we're going to see how it goes. I don't know if I've made five cards with you in one night, but, <laughs> you know, why not? <laughs> so, Thanks for sharing, Shirley. I really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who shares my videos. That is so awesome. We continue to grow and um, bring in new people into our community, which is awesome. So what else, you guys? Card making benefit. Hi, Pam Simmons. We've been doing phenomenal. Every day we have a few more people that sign up for doing the benefit with us. Hi, Marsha Kulbert. Uh, we... Hi, Carolyn Ketchmark. Hi, Tracy Gruby. Hi, Holly Paplo and Luann Johnson. Woohoo! So, yeah, back to the YouTube. Um, there is a post out there in my Cards by Christine Facebook page. Um, hi, Sherry Stewart. And it uh, has a, a, a cover photo of a, all these little YouTube like or YouTube play buttons. And that's the post where you want to put that you subscribe because that will get you in for the drawing. Hi, Francis Rodriguez on your way to Virginia. Yay! Hi, Becky Christensen. Uh, so, yeah. So I've been doing a YouTube video since Sunday, um, basically featuring information on the card making benefit that is going to benefit our, which is our Underground Railroad. Uh, we have about 51 people signed up. We're aiming for 60 now. You guys, if we're gonna make a goal and we beat it before the deadline, we're gonna make another goal. <laughs> That's usually how I operate. Hi, Becky Rohr and Betty Ray. Uh, so we're shooting for 60. I think that's what we're going to plan to kit up. And so that means we have about nine spots left. If anybody would like to sign up for it, I did a video in YouTube on Sunday. Hi, Faye Godby. On Sunday, I also shared the link in this Facebook page. Hi, Kathy Strange <laughs> from Minnesota. Um, so you can watch that one. And I also put together the cards. Um, I did one card Monday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday, and one about less than an hour ago. Um, do you need to do anything if you're already subscribed? Well, if you're already subscribed, whoop, whoop, yay, but you still need to comment on the post that we shared on Monday night. 
only the names that are on that post will be compiled, right? Because we don't know, like we're not gonna go hunting and searching and checking everybody on YouTube who subscribed. We're gonna keep it that whoever put their name in the post on Facebook that they subscribed, that's who's gonna be in for the drawing. Hi, Lynn Beasley. So what we plan to do is as soon as we hit 1500 or, um, where we're at on October 31st, we'll see how close we get. Hi, Julie Poindexter. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Um, shared with your friends. Yay, awesome. That would be awesome if they started following. Um, thanks, Faye. Uh, so yeah, um, you do need to comment on that post to be in the drawing. So that's what you would need to do. Um, but you guys can, what I did every day, I've been making one of the cards, just because I'm not doing a PDF tutorial on that. It's an in-person event and the cards that people are getting are already made. Um, and we do that because people who are donating for the benefit aren't always card makers and it's too much to figure out well this person is and this person doesn't have this and this person does so all the cards for people who are donating that can't make it in person your cards are going to be made for you and so i don't write a pdf tutorial and i thought it would be a nice little add-on bonus to just show how the cards are put together and what was used and i talked through the colors hi tammy steckling um so yeah so that's what you guys can go back and watch those videos um, you can find them in my YouTube channel under the live videos or I've been sharing the link on the Facebook page. Uh, so yeah, so I've been getting lots of questions about the, the YouTube versus Facebook. Um, so people are asking, well, are the videos still gonna be in Facebook and can they still watch it in Facebook? Well, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be doing the video in YouTube and then I'm gonna be sharing the link for the video in YouTube on my Facebook page, but it's not gonna be putting it in my library of videos on Facebook. So the way you would search for it is through the news feed and that can be cumbersome. So um, the best bet is to get into YouTube and subscribe to my channel and the library is, I've been putting everything in YouTube that I've been doing on Facebook since March of 2020, right? So you guys, we have two and a half years worth of videos in YouTube already, which is the same as what I have in Facebook. It's just that the sharing and the I should since did the sharing. The searching is so much easier in YouTube. So, hi, Feline Mays. Yay. Thanks for sharing, everybody. I see your comments that you're sharing. So, that's awesome. Um, so, I'll flip down. I don't know if there's anything else to talk about. Hmm. We have about one week left in the Stampin' Up! month, Stampin' Up! quarter, and Stampin' Up! year, you guys. And so, my goal is for the team to finish as strong as we possibly can. So every order that helps um, get us closer to our goals, um, that would anything coming in is awesome, you guys. That's why I did the soft seedlings class as an order only class, you guys. Uh, I could have made it that it was um, you could pay for it with a purchase, but I wanted to finish the quarter as and year, you guys. Ultimately, the year. Hi, Vicky Fritz. The, um, you can do live, y yeah. So um, I've been you. So, yep, and we're at like a, yep, you can do lives on YouTube and we're at like 1,050 subscribers now. So, yay. Um, yeah, Luann Johnson just reminded that there's a new week of sales that started today, the last week of the weekly sales. So, go out and check to see what there is. Um, hi, Kathy Showalter and Vicki Lynch. Uh, so, we're trying to finish the, the year as strong as possible. So, with soft seedlings, you guys, I really, I did make it an order-based class only to help finish, to help the team finish as strong as possible with our, our team sales, my sales, all of the above. And I am happy to report there are 35 people signed up for the soft seedlings class, all with orders. Is that not amazing? Um, five more. I'm planning for 40, you guys. Uh, I think registration I have on there through the 27th, but I'm just putting it out there that I'm planning. I not, had no idea I'd hit 40, but I, in my head I put, oh, let's put 40. So I'm already at 35. So there are only five class spots left for soft seedlings in case anybody still was on the fence or interested in it. I'm going to just take the next five people versus making more because I'm also in the process of prepping for fun folds, you guys. And we already have about uh, 50, 65, 75, 85, 90 people signed up for fun folds and I'm making a hundred. So same thing with fun folds. If you were on the fence or figuring out if you wanted to do it, it's better to sign up now <laughs> because I think I'm, I am capping it at a hundred. I'm not gonna make more. Um, so, um, oh, Cindy, I can sign you up for soft seedlings. And Feline says she's putting in her order today. Yay. So Cindy, um, I have you on the list now. Yay. Um, Feline, let's just see here. 
Feline, I need to add you to the list because your name wasn't on there yet. So you saw you guys get the forehead with me looking down. But I added Cindy and Feline. Um, perfect. Yeah, use that host code. I'm down to uh, three left then. So, oh, Marsha Kulubert. Um, yes, um, we'll get you signed up too. So now I'm down to two, you guys. That's how it goes usually. I tell you, I only have a few left and all of a sudden they're gone. <laughs> so Marsha Kulubert, yes, I have you down too. So, um Perfect. Cindy, Feline, Marsha, just to confirm, I just got you guys all signed up. So as long as I have the class sign-up sheets in my hand, you guys, if you're new to me, um, um, oh, Mary Carls, you were trying to find me on YouTube. <laughs> oh, fun fold, Faye Gabby, for the fun folds, if not on the list. Um, yeah, so Faye will add you. I, You know what, Faye? Um, I'm not sure. Faye, why don't you send me a note? Hang on, I'm gonna get some white out. Faye, um, send me a note, please, um, for that, Faye. I don't want to go through and look to see if you're signed up for it at the moment, but I will. Um, and then Tammy, too, send me a note following up about the fun folds. That would be awesome, you guys. <laughs> Shirley's, yes, please. You guys are great. Um, so, Shirley, I think you meant, um, hi, Carol Solinsky. Hi, Millie Kindle. Hi, Deanna Stell. Um, Shirley, I think you were talking about soft seedlings. Um, you weren't on the list. Hi, Sue Volts. Um, yeah, you guys, this is like our social hour. The first 10 or 15 minutes of this is always to ch chitty chat, right? So um, I believe that, um, Shirley, you're not on the list because it was free with an order. So I hadn't included that in your, your list. So Shirley, I have you on. And just anybody that's new to the list that's just adding up or adding on, as long as you use my current host code before you submit your order, that would be perfect um, because that links it to my, my workshop that I have open. So surely I do have you on the list now too and that you'll be placing an order to get that class for free. Um, yeah, and I think Faye and Tammy will make sure that you're on for the fun folds, which will be great. So, all right. So, <laughs> taking care of business every day, you guys, right? Taking care of business. <laughs> there is a song, right? <laughs> so, all right. Let's see here. What do we have? We are talking rustic harvest, and I was going to go through the class sign-up sheet. Hi, Donna Simmer. All right, so we need to go through to let you guys all know who signed up for rustic harvest. Um, and then we'll, so that means we're going to do roll call, you guys. Faye Godby, I see your name on the list for fun folds. I just happened to look down and there it was. So Faye, you're already on the list and you already sent a check for it. Yay. <laughs> so hi, Sharon Land. All right, roll call. We're going to do that as long as I have the class sign-up sheets in my hands. So this is Rustic Harvest. You guys, we have a pretty big class list. So definitely do a call out if you're watching live right now or if you're catching the replay, definitely call out that you're here. Hi, Kathy Viverka from Northeast Ohio. All right, so first on our list was Miss Doris Munson. I believe she signed up probably four months ago already. Uh, Frances Rodriguez signed up right after her. Um, Becky Gandolfo. Um, hi, Jay Shante. Nice to see you, girlfriend. All right, so after Frances Rodriguez, we have Becky Gandolfo, Carla Cordes, Feline Mays. Hi, Judy Sharp from California. Uh, Feline Mays, Sue Spiegner, Holly Gentry, Carla Lake, Jamie Tafoya, Helen Chase, who is in Alaska at the moment, you guys, Kate Reynolds, Penny Powell, Far Barco, Lynette Mooney, Jeannie Parker, Shirley Malarkey, Sandy Wicklinder, uh, Carol Selinski, Vera Anderson, Linda Rios, uh, Gwen Patra Petrashek, Angela Knutson, Mary Lemke, Laura Sullivan, Debbie Buzzy at Work Schultz, Christina Bernards, Sherry Martin, Karen Cotton, Deanna Stell, Sue Volts, Susan Healy Cribs, Beverly Smith, Sarah Merchant, Chris Weed, Mary Carls from Jericho, Wisconsin, Faye Godby, Lynn Beasley, Tammy Steckling, Linda Hunt, Dar McCarthy, Donna Grushke, uh, Carolyn Ketchmark, Betty Pyle, Annette Rollin, Lila Erickson, Joanne Kitts, Lisa Spacek, Vicki Rodriguez, Patricia Settle, Becky Rohrer, Annette Rollin, Tracy Gruby, Sherry Everett, and Linda Bendick. So Karen Cotton, 
I was looking through my list and I don't know, I, you said that you're here, but we need to double check. You need to confirm for me because I don't think you are on my class list, but I'm happy you're here, which is amazing. But I want to make sure I didn't miss giving you your kits. Oh, you're right here. Karen Cotton after Christina Bernard's. Oh, whew. you guys, there were so many names that I was like, holy Moses, I didn't want to forget anybody. And so, yes, Karen Cotton, you're on the list right between Sherry and Deanne. So we're good. I was going to say that because I want to double check. You guys, I believe I have two sets of this class left. I'm going to wait. And um, if there's somebody who wants to get on the waiting list for those two, I would be happy to add you to a waiting list. But I want to make sure I didn't forget anybody that was supposed to get this class before I commit to giving out those last two kits, you guys, because I haven't, you know, you know, sometimes, oh, got it, good. Um, didn't hear my name. No wonder I didn't get my kits. So yeah, Kathy King, you weren't on the list. I don't think you had signed up for it, but Kathy, if you did that, we can figure it out. You know, we've been really good. I know last week, well, Mary Carls had a question about the kits and we figured out that she hadn't signed up for it. So that was good. And that's usually what happens. We figure things out after. But if anybody else besides Kathy um, is wondering if they were on the class or not, I, I do have those two so we can make it work. Yvonne Cooper, hello from Florida. So Kathy, I don't remember you giving me that you wanted to. So we'll figure it out after class. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. We always make things right. Um, hi, Gail Ashworth. You guys probably think I miss things, but I don't generally. We always figure it out after the fact that usually we got it right. Um, you have that you paid for it. Okay, well, that would make sense. Then I will, um, I'll make sure. Are you sure I didn't say your name? I'm, I didn't. So we'll figure it out, Kathy. So made a note so we can always work on it. So you guys, this is Rustic Harvest. I do want to call out too. This is my promotional suite class that I do where if you buy the bundle from me by a set date, which was last week sometime, you get uh, half a pack of designer series paper as a thank you in addition to getting the class for free. And woohoo, um, yay to uh, Kathy Dolly Nagari, Francis Rodriguez, Carla Lake, Jamie Tafoya, um, Penny Powell, Lynette Mooney, Mary Lemke, Laura Sullivan, Beverly Smith, Sarah Merchant, Lynn Beasley, Linda Hunt, Carolyn Ketchmark, and Vicki Rodriguez. All of you lovely ladies bought the bundle through me as your RSVP for class. And so you got a half a pack of paper in with your kits. Whoop, whoop. Yay, yay. So that's awesome, you guys. I think that was probably one of my biggest, like, promotions that was taken advantage of. So that was awesome. So hi, Rose Coleman. Yay. All right. So what's, let's flip the camera down. I'm going to share with you what this suite is all about. So this is called Rustic Harvest, and it is um, on pages 48 and 49 of this little mini holiday catalog, and there is a bundle. It is currently not available, you guys. Um, it is currently out of stock, and you, I think I was looking, it comes back the end of October. The other thing that comes in here are these, these leaves and these amber gems. One of the cards features the amber gems, and then the leaves are in your kits. Hi, Connie Moore. Uh, so we used that on one of the cards. And so those are the leaves and they were embossed. We embossed them with painted texture. So that's super cool. So we'll um, use those in one of your card kits. Um, the other thing that's in this suite of products is the, um, it's called Embossing Editions Toolkit. Uh, this is on a little embossing buddy. And then there's a uh, reverse tweezers. Or maybe, yep, it's a reverse tweezers. There's a little uh, paintbrush for helping you with your embossing needs. Um, Jay was just saying how pretty the designer series paper is, which I have in this book right here. So, so pretty. Um, what they have on one side is black with white. And then the opposite side. So these are opposite. These are opposite. Opposite. So the color is on the one side and black and white on the other side. So on your card kits, you guys, we used these three on um, some of the cards. This one got used and I believe this one got used. I don't know if I used this one at all, but the different colors that go with it are Mary Merlot, Cajun Craze, Crush Curry, Mossy Meadow, Early Espresso, and Basic Black. Hi, Doris Munson joining late. Better late than never is what we say. And then the other thing that's in here, um, Basic Black 12 by 12. Hi, Patricia Settle. Basic black 12 by 12. And I guess I can show you a card. This is what I'm doing for in-person bingo in a couple weeks, but this is a perfect use for in um, the black 12 by 12. It opens up and it stretches and spans out 12 inches. So you can make this cool kind of a card layout with 
the 12 by 12 paper. So again, that's in-person bingo, you guys. I've got a couple spots open for that in case anybody's interested. So, um, okay, before I go into this. Hi, Chris Dudranke. I have all my other cards here. Just want to show you. Hi, Carolyn Chambers from Montreal. These are the card benefit that I've been talking about a lot lately this whole past week. Um, so these are the cards that we're going to be doing for that in case anybody was interested. These are the ones I'm doing the short little YouTube live videos um, on. And this is where you can get signed up. I have about nine left. And in case you missed it, this is what's hot right now. <laughs> um, in two weeks from tonight, we're going to be doing fun folds, right? So like, I think it's the 6th of October. So you can still get signed up. I think I have nine spots. So as long as I got these on my desk here, I was going to show you guys. Sorry, it's kind of like mishy-mashy, but like this is the perched in a tree one. So this is the Halloween one like that. A bunch of you guys are already signed up, but in case you're not, that's what's going on. And then there's this card for the last fun fold. Thanks for sharing, Kathy. I appreciate it. So those are fun folds. And then the soft seedlings that I think I have one left. This card gets used twice. Hi, Robin Stender and Sherry Holly. This card gets used in both classes. So there's the one. You guys, this is the one that amazes me. Chris and I had so much fun making these soft seedling cards. This was her idea to do the mint with a soft suede. And you guys have been loving that color combination. So I have one set left with an order for that one. So now I can clear these off my area and can keep her moving. So these are the cards we're going to be making tonight that, um, that I might have one set left of. And so we're going to make these tonight. Plus we're going to make my mystery card. <laughs> I think that's my plan anyways. Oh, it's 61 in Northeast Ohio. So you guys, we've been having colder nights. We've been getting down to the 38s. 40s around here for our nights. So uh, definitely colder. So which one do we want to start with? Let's start with this one. This one's easy, I think. So we'll start with this one first. Find our card kit. And yeah, thanks, Rose. All right. So this is our card kit that we're going to grab here. So you guys, when you get the kit from me, this is what it comes with. Four envelopes and then a little slip of paper that has the name of the class. And everything's in each envelope. So you're going to want to grab the one that has the Mary Merlot and the Cajun Craze in it. So hi, Carissa Alberts. All right, so let's grab that one first and we're gonna put this one together, uh, talk about the stamping. So let's move this out of the way. We need, for this one, we need a Memento ink. We need Mary Merlot, not a lot of it. And we also need the sponge dauber for Mary Merlot. <laughs> Calling Dot Gardner, by the way. Dot Gardner, if you're watching me, you left me a message. Couldn't connect to get the phone number, though. Um, so I did try to reach out to you on Facebook via Messenger. And you should give me a call back or reply to me on Messenger about game night, I think. So, all right. So the stamp here, you guys. I set this up. Hi, Martine. Hi, Penny Powell. Um, so I set it up for in-person to use our Stamparatus. You guys don't see me using the Stamparatus very much because I generally just fly by the seat of my pants with stamping. But this is a perfect little tool. Um, still feeding the animals. Oh my gosh, Penny. Okay, I gotta share a story with you guys. So we went out to my parents this morning, really early, Tyler and I did. And one of the farm cats, Bootsy is her name. She is the best farm cat. She just makes the best babies too. Uh, she was bringing her babies up to the front porch. So if you guys want a, a cute little picture here, if you don't mind, I'm going to share a picture with you. My mom took this and she sent it to me. So thank you, Penny, you made me think of this about the animals. So my mom, I'm going to show you the baby kittens on the farm right now. These are so adorable. Look at these little babies. So Bootsy brought them up um, to the front porch and my mom has them in a box. So yay. Okay. All right, so that is what I wanted to share with you guys. And um, let me get back to my video now. So I just want to share them. They're cute little fur balls. Um, so you need a lesson on how to do this. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. Um, we're going to um, talk about how to use the Stamparatus because this is a great tool to have, especially if you um, are wanting to do consistent, easy stamping with sentiments or any kind of stamp. So what I've done 
is I've set up a template here, all right? And let's see here. This, I what I did is I set up this piece of white paper. It was just a piece of scratch paper. And then what I did is I taped it down. I made sure I kept track of where it was on here. And I set my stamp right here. I shut the cover so it would pick up the stamp like this. And then what happens is I took this piece of paper off. I went to the die cutting machine. I die cut it using the frame. And then I came back and I knew it needed to go right back on this area right here. And I put the tape back down. And so then what happens is you guys who have your kits, um, you got a label that looks like this. And um, in class, they were able to put this right in this open area. And then what they would do, they did in class, is they put ink on the label over yonder here on this side. So it's just memento black right now. And then the other one does the same thing, but in espresso. So we're gonna do black on this one. And then you just go straight down and you give it nice, even pressure. And when you stamp, if you have a hard time picking it out of here, like mine just started to pop up like that, you can always take your pick tool and kind of wedge underneath there and get it. So in class, this is how we had it set up so that nobody really had to do any die cutting. Um, it's all done. So for those people that got the little white label and have this stamp set, you can hover over the top. They're back and forth. You know, if it's the same on both sides, you can, um, I believe it's the same setup. It's like a mirror image. So you could practice on one side and then um, hopefully get it on the other. If you don't have this exact stamp, right? If you don't have it, you could still sponge the edges with a color and find a sentiment. Um, you could always trace the outside of the image here, this focal stamp or the stamped or the die cut image and create your own little line. Decorate it up however you want to, okay? So that is how to use it. So now what is awesome is when you're at the die cutting machine, you're just gonna cut out a whole bunch of white labels. And then you like if you do swapping or any time where you make a lot of Christmas cards or birthday cards, and then it's just consistent. Always stamps it in the same spot. You don't have to sit at the die cutting machine and kind of match up your die all the time. So super cool tool to have, love it. Great investment. So I have here my kit. So if you guys are working with me, hi Kathy Miller. So I had one done, so now I have an extra one done. <laughs> all right, so I don't need that or that. Slide those there. So in your kit, you guys will have a uh, this butterfly. <laughs> so thank you to Julie Bierschbach. She really read, so thank you to Karen Wetstein for proofreading my PDF that I sent to you guys. And thank you to Julie Bierschbach for asking me where the butterfly came in. Um, so in your PDF that I emailed to you guys a couple days ago, I forgot to put this as one of the items under the dies. Um, oh, thanks, Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Latokia. Hi, Becky Gandolfo from Lynn Livonia, Michigan. Um, Yes, Feline, you're so correct. It's the perfect thing for multiple swaps. So the butterfly, you guys, comes from designer tags. Okay, so I will be updating the PDF when I have the video links, and I will re-email it out to everybody so that you have it with that in it. Uh, the Cajun craze here is embossed with your leaf fall or fall leaf embossing folder. That's the one we used in class last week, Thursday, to do this card. And it doesn't emboss on this bottom corner, so it was perfect for stamping a sentiment. So on this one, that's why it's blank down here. Hi, Sue Thomas. Your designer paper is three by five and a quarter. Everybody's is gonna look slightly different. You may or may not get a butterfly. The reason that I put a die cut butterfly on it is because not everybody gets a butterfly. So on this sample I have here, you guys, there's no butterfly. This is paper that is one continuous, like this might go here. Oh, look at that. That matches up perfectly, haha. <laughs> so this one goes here, there's one here. It's four columns and it flips over and it has four on the other side and so some will have two butterflies some will have a half a butterfly some will have no butterflies just wanted to call that out that just because you don't have a butterfly doesn't mean it's bad <laughs> that's why you have this guy that you're going to put another one on okay your black here is uh five and a quarter by four and a half nope it's five and a half by four and a quarter it's just a quarter sheet of paper and your cajun is a mat that's four by five and a quarter It'll just mat on there like that. And then you have um, an inside that is three by five and a quarter. So these are the same size. 
And then you have this three and three sixteenths by 11 scored at five and a half, which is right in the middle. You guys have yours folded already, but you will want to take a bone folder and burnish it. Thanks for sharing, Sue, and everybody else that's been sharing the video. I appreciate it. So there's not a lot of stamping on this. This designer series paper does all the work for you because it's already printed on there. So it did add a little bit of color to this label here with some Mary Merlot ink. I just wanted to bring out a little more of the red on it. So you're going to take your sponge dauber or you could take a sponge or you don't have to do it at all either. <laughs> you're just going to add a little color if you want to around the edges. I try to be consistent, but by the end, I end up not being consistent. And so I go back and make the rest of it inconsistent where I'll go in further, come out further, go in further, come out further. I make it so I intentionally made it a mishmash of the depths going in. <laughs> so um, Holly Pablo, the die cut butterfly is from Designer Tags. Okay, so that's it for this color. On the inside, you guys, um, what you could use is there's a little sunflower in there if you want. Um, there's I pulled in for in-person class. I pulled Happy Birthday. Um, Happy Birthday is from a stamp set. That's what Happy Birthday looks like. It's perfect. It's a little one. Um, it's from a set called Peaceful Moments. And so there's a Happy Birthday. It's a great sentiment. You're very welcome, Holly. Um, it's a great sentiment set because you have thank you, sympathy, birthday, congratulations, and wishing you every happiness a special day will bring is awesome. Hi, Cynthia from West Virginia. Late to the game, but not too late to the party. We're still partying. So we're gonna grab black ink and stamp a sentiment on this one. I know in my PDF, you guys, I sent you a picture of the inside. Hi, Susan Hendricks. I sent you a picture of the inside and I did put um, this strip of paper. It was a scrap that I had. Um, completely didn't put it in there, but um, what we're gonna do is instead we're gonna stamp a flower on the inside bottom corner here instead of um, putting that strip of paper. If you guys have this designer series paper and you really like the look of it, it's just three inches by a half of an inch. That's what that is down there. But this looks really cute, which is putting a little flower in the bottom corner. So that's it for our ink, I believe. So let's move these out. And I think we can get a little bit glue happy. So let's do these three things. And we'll put some glue on them. I hope you guys, I started a new glue, so it's really full. So the struggle isn't real anymore with our glue. So we're going to do this. All right. So we're going to put this one onto the black piece like this. Uh, the, the glue is awesome because you can just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it till you get it exactly where you want it. And then we're going to grab this one. We're just gonna measure to make sure it fits there good. Yep, good. If for any reason your black was a hair longer or a hair shorter, you could always trim this before you get glue happy. You know, you could always trim a little bit. So that's one thing I always encourage people to do is hold your pieces up together um, before you start gluing, because then if you need to trim anything, you have the opportunity to trim without having glue on the paper and getting glue all over your trimmer. So there's that piece. And then this one. We'll go on the inside, just like that. And then flip that over and the back side is where we need to add a little bit more glue. So you guys, this is our warm up card. Honestly, this is the easiest card out of all of them. <laughs> the least amount of stamping and then just glue, glue, glue. All right, so we can get this guy centered left to right, making sure my top is nice and flush, moving it around. I get it where I want it. All right. So you're not going to see a lot of the embossing because it gets covered up, but you still see it peeking through on the left and the right. So when you open that up, it'll look like that. The label here, you guys, is popped up with some dimensionals. So we're going to do four of them. And then we get to make a bow together because I see that I put a, my strip of ribbon in here, my little slip of ribbon. So this just gets set somewhere 
uh, near the bottom. It's covering up some of the stems, not the flowers per se. All right, so there's that. Grab your bow maker, find the size that you want. My nails, I should say my nail holes are getting worn, so my bows are together. They're smaller at the top, and then they're further away at the bottom. So you can kind of figure out what size of a bow. I'm gonna go up here and see if I gave myself enough ribbon. I did, yes. So I'm making two bunny ears, so I wrapped it around so there's two loops on each side, and then I put the, it goes like an X now, and then the bottom goes up and over, and then just make it into a little knot, and then I tighten by putting the ends to the bottom left and the bottom right, like that. So there's that. That's our little bosey, and then I grab a glue dot, and I like to put the glue dot like where I'm gonna put it on my paper. So it's gonna go right there, and then I'll set my bow right into it. Okay, and then you can kind of pull out the little bunny ears so that they make it nice and full, like that. And then grab your ribbon scissors, and you're just gonna trim your tails, just like that. All right, so let's talk about the butterfly. It's from the rose gold foil paper. There's three different sheets. We used a lot of that in the Abigail Rose class. Break a toothpick off in the holes. Oh yeah, you're right, that would work. But I actually, I like having them like wiggle room because it allows me to make a bow smaller up here and it makes a bow wider down here. So it gives me more flexibility on the size of the bow. So. Oh, so Kathy, um, you could definitely rewatch this, absolutely, but if you go to, um, I will show you really quick, get this, you guys, in case you didn't know this, it's easily found on YouTube. Um, I did a tip Tuesday, so if you go into where, oops, that's not what I wanted. If I go to my Cards by Christine and you search in here, uh, like Cards by, let's see if I can spell it, Cards by, this is a aha, in case you guys didn't know this, Cards by Christine bow maker. I did a video on this. Oh, it's going to want to do an ad for 10 seconds. So <laughs> we'll let it do its ad while we glue our butterfly down. <laughs> but yeah, they got to get those ads in there for us, you guys. But as soon as you can skip the ad, you skip the ad. And I had a using a bow maker. So I did one year ago, a tip Tuesday on how to use the bow maker. 23 minutes, all different types of bows, double-sided, hi Kimbar, um, double-sided ribbon, all that good stuff. So just figure out where you wanna put your other butterfly. If you wanna cover the one up that's white, you could otherwise find a different spot. I'm gonna put this other one right there, like he's flying through the air with the greatest of ease. Um, so yeah, you guys, honestly, one of the reasons why I'm switching over to doing my, you know, doing YouTube with my lives and all that kind of stuff is because the searching functionality is so much easier in YouTube to find the things that I've been doing. Um, Facebook made their changes, and you might hear other demonstrators saying this too. Um, Facebook made changes back in April, and they have not gotten better. So I'm, I'm kind of over it. So you guys got four of these champagne rhinestones in your kit. Um, I put two of them on the butterfly right here, and then I put two down on the label. So you did get four of them in your kit. And that's the champagne rhinestones. The champagne goes really nicely with these fall colors because they have a hint of orangey pink to them, like an orangey pink. So it's so cool. All right. So didn't Stella anything though. Let's grab our Stella pen. You guys know what you can Stella here? You can Stella all of this designer series paper because it's printed. So it's not going to bleed at all. And so just take your Stella pen, Stella all over. Okay, so that's what we sell it. And if you wanted to, you could go over the tops of some of those leaves that are on the side here just to add a little. You know, Stella is not something that you guys can easily see on a video camera, but when you see it in person, that's when you can actually call it out. So, all right, you guys, I think that's what we got for this one. So again, I put my butterfly in a different spot because I thought I liked it better over there. So it wasn't competing with that guy. One down, you guys. Woohoo! All right, so just a reminder what we did for the inside on here is we stamped a little uh, flower right on the inside. Yes, Jamie, absolutely. So, my whole goal is to transition 
um, to YouTube Live starting October 4th when I do my first YouTube Live class with the soft seedlings. From that point forward, um, I will be doing the videos live in YouTube and sharing the link for the YouTube live video in Facebook, but it'll be in my news feed. It won't be in the video library. So um, I highly encourage you guys, if you, if you can, you don't have to have an account with YouTube to watch videos in YouTube, but if you want to comment, you need to have a Gmail account or a YouTube account. So yay. All right, you guys. So there's one card done. We're going to do, um, we're going to do this pumpkin next. Okay. So let's flip back down and we're going to do this one. Oh, I think everybody, I saw this class on Saturday, you guys. Oh, I'm glad you liked the card. Thank you. Um, oh, got to share something with you. In case you were wondering where I got my inspiration for this card. Ha, ha, ha. You guys, let's go to page 48. Da, da, da. <laughs> Can you see some similarities? <laughs> Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Added some layers, made it a fun fold, did my label different. Totally, I looked at this card for my starting point, but then I ended up with that one. So, but just to see how that works. All right, Jamie, awesome. I'm so glad that you subscribed. Yeah, you guys are definitely going to want to change your notifications. I mean, I've been doing the YouTube lives every day since Sunday. Every day since Sunday. And the most I've had watching me live are 18 people. Thank you to the 18 and 14 people, you know, the people that have been catching me. But you guys, we're almost at 100 now. So come October, we got to make sure that we get for the classes switched over that you guys are watching live on YouTube too. So um, it's just, I think for the long run, it's going to be a, sm a much smoother um, experience. And people have told me that the video looks crisper when I'm in YouTube and that the clarity is so much better. And so I've been getting positive feedback. So I'm going full steam ahead with it. So yay. All right, you guys, this is our pumpkin, pumpkin card. All right. So pumpkins. So in your kit, you guys, you'll have a little slip of this ribbon. This is from the Abigail Rose Suite. It's like natural ribbon. Can't remember if that's the actual name or not, but close. Uh, these are from Stylish Shapes, all of these four pieces. There's two banners and two circles, each in espresso and vanilla. So those are already die cut for you. And then your piece of um, Cajun Craze-ish uh, designer series paper, that's ribbon, is um, from the Rustic Harvest. Sometimes my little guillotine trimmer leaves a little bit of an issue on the end there. Um, you have a Cajun Craze mat, and then you have an crumb cake mat. Now, I worked ahead. Apparently, I see this. I embossed it with that leaf fall or fall leaf embossing folder. And then what you're going to do is take your sponge dauber, and you're going to lightly color some of the leaves just to um, make them pop up. Now, you don't have to do the middle section. And the reason you don't need to waste your ink or time on that is because this will cover it up. So I kind of went through that middle section. Okay. You'll have a piece of vanilla for your inside, and then you'll have an espresso for your base. And that, you guys can grab your bone folders, make sure you burnish it. All right, so let's talk about this pumpkin, though. So, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin pie is in Cajun. So, the stamp set, you guys, I didn't really show it at the beginning. I saw it in the catalog, but that's what it looks like. So all in all, we're almost using all the stamps from the set within all the cards, except for some of these squiggly diggly things. So, and I didn't put you are missed anywhere. So yay, Kimberly, Milliam found me and love how you teach and great tips and you're making the cards. Also your cards are, oh, thank you so much, Kimberly. Yes, you should definitely try one of my classes. I think anybody who's taken any of my classes has always given me positive feedback about how much they love them. Like there's a lot that goes into them. There's die cutting, there's embossing. It's, you know, they're more like gourmet cards <laughs> and I love it. So we need some sentiments. Hi, Alice Samsel from Indiana. We need a sentiment. So we're going to do, oh, uh, no, we're going to do, you are such a blessing on the outside because you guys are such a blessing to me. So yay, let's do that. Um, talking about the, the sponge drawer, I just used early espresso ink, just so you know, and I just lightly, lightly, lightly hover over to get some of that uh, color on there. Hi, Ann Diaquisto. Um, oh, thanks, Alice, for sharing. I appreciate it. Um, 
Thanks, Doris and Holly and Feline. <laughs> Once you start, you're going to get hooked. <laughs> you, that's usually what happens, you guys. It does. It really does. Um, so we're going to do some gluing. So let's glue this first. Um, sometimes I do my stamping first. Sometimes I do my gluing, you guys. I guess if something needs to be stamped, then I will stamp it before it gets glued. But we're going to put this guy right on here. Don't trim off your ends, right? Because they will go onto, they will hang over to the Cajun Craze layer. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> you betcha, Kimberly. You guys, this is so much fun. Um, I've gotten so many like comments that you guys appreciate the lives because it helps teach you how to do things. And that's what I'm all about, is teaching you how to do this. Is this class too late? So Alice, I might have one kit left. Um, and so what you should do is send me an email and let me know um, that you're interested in it. And I'll, if I do have one left, then it would be, it could go to you, absolutely. And this class was, um, it was a $23 or it was free with a $45 order using my current host code. So if, for those that are newer to me, sometimes my classes um, are fee-based, meaning you can't um, place an order to get them free. And sometimes they're either one Right, so this one is an either or. You could buy the class straight out or you could place an order to get it free. And sometimes, like the soft seedlings, is gonna be free with a purchase. So I have a lot, it's overwhelming. That is what I hear from everybody when they first start working with me. Very overwhelming that there's so much to, that I offer um, and it's a lot to keep track of. But I honestly think, for those of you that have been with me for a little bit and it was overwhelming in the beginning, is it not so overwhelming now? Like, have you got it? Like, I, I hope that I hear that people have it figured out or if they don't, they're still trying to figure it out. Um, but I work with everybody and I help you um, to be successful with my classes. So generally when I um, work on the designing, oh, you can't see my email. It's right here, chrismbertram at msn.com. So um, it's my name, Chris. M, my middle initial, Bertram at msn.com. And so we're gonna stamp our pumpkin here in Cajun Craze. And she's the busiest card maker I know. That is so true, Donna. <laughs> oh, I can't disagree with you there. All right, so we're gonna get a little slip of paper here because we're gonna put our leaf down here on the inside. You could put the pumpkin if you wanted, but we're definitely, I like the leaf down there. So we're gonna do that in Cajun so it matches. Um, the You're a Real Blessing, we're going to do that in espresso. So 14 months later, Cindy understands the system. <laughs> hey, you got it though. Kudos to you. You got it. So what happens is until you get it, I think that you just keep asking, right? In general, people just keep asking and I'll always tell you yes or no or what you need to do to make it happen, right? <laughs> so hi, Diana. Um, Nap, nice to see you here with us from Kingston, New York, North Carolina. Woohoo! Um, give me the name of the embossing folder and which catalog it's in. Yep, Martina, I can grab that in a set second. Not overwhelming now, but it took a little for you to get it. Yep, Melanie, you are so true. It takes most people. I'm going to practice on the back just to make sure. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, now let's see if I can do that um, right on here to do that again. Sometimes I'll practice on the back side. It gets get. It's getting better now that you're going to YouTube, but I found your, I think it'll all be good. Oh, good, yeah. So we've got a couple more classes here in Facebook, you guys. We have um, definitely Ink, Paper, Scissors next week, Thursday is gonna be in Facebook. I think that's it for brown. Okay, so we're gonna get that out of here. We might need this, I'm not quite sure. I was never overwhelmed, perfect! It just had to back up and pause our parts. Oh yeah, good, good, Linda. She just had to back up and pause. Yeah, that's what's great about replays, you guys, is if you miss something that I'm doing while I'm live, you can always catch the replay and then go to that section and watch it again. Hi, Corinne. All right, you guys. Um, Martine just asked about the embossing folder, just to call out where that is. It's the mini catalog here. If you go to page 81, it's called the Leaf Fall 3D Embossing Folder, which is backwards to me. I think it should say Falling Leaves 3D, but it's Leaf fall. <laughs> okay, mini catalog, the holiday that's out right now. Okay, so you guys, we're gonna color our pumpkin. You got some options for coloring your pumpkin with me. At home, if you do have the Cajun Craze marker, 
Uh, you could definitely use the Cajun craze and the old olive markers. But if you recall um, and watched my, um, hi Millie Kindle, my Abigail Rose class, we colored with a Stella pen. And we're going to do that again with the pumpkin because it really, um, hi Pauline, it really saves your, your blends. Um, it's a big area. And um, what is the name of your YouTube subscribe? Cards by Christine. YouTube name is Cards by Christine. I'm pointing my finger at it right here in purple. Okay, so what you're gonna do is take your block, dip it in your ink pad. Now I have some left over from class um, in person on Saturday and I have some here. That might be enough. I'm gonna try to work with that. If it's not, I can always get more. All right, so Corinne, I hope that made sense. It's Cards by Christine. So you're gonna grab your Stella pen, and it helps if you have a, like a water painter or an aqua painter. And my block, I let this just sit here and dry up, but there's still good ink on there, and I wasn't gonna throw that away. Um, so I'm gonna put a drop of water on both of these. So all I'm doing is squeezing the water and it put a little drop right there. So it's gonna help to re-wet the, the blocks with the ink. I'm not really using this for coloring. I just used it for a water source. Heck, we talked about spit. <laughs> you could use spit. If you had a cup that was sweating, you could use a little drop of that. Like basically just gotta get this wet on here. So I'm gonna dip in here and I'm going to use the green first and I'm gonna go to get some ink and a little bit of water. And the fun thing is that everybody's been using their Stella pens to dip in here. And so there's Stella already on the block as well. And so I'm just taking and dipping my Stella pen and coloring it with the green. So that's it. That's all there is for green. So I'm going to save this for Wednesday night when I have this class again in person. And now we can focus on the Cajun Craze color. So we're just going to take and go and swirl that water around and get some of that color on our Stella pen. And we're just going to use that to color. Now the same thing happens when you're using a blender pen. You're going to have color in the beginning when you start to color, and then it's going to eventually go onto your paper and your Stella pen is going to need to get recolored. So it's going to take just a second to do this coloring, but it turns out super cool. And when you're done, it looks like you have Stella-fied like your pumpkin and it's on like Stella, Stella steroids or something. So, and what's great is you can just eat, keep adding color. And if you need to go darker in a spot, what I'm gonna do is work my way. Hi, Philly Cinto. Philly, when is your benefit? You were making those pet cards. I'm curious if you've had it and how it was or if it's coming up yet. So Philly was making some cards to donate for um, a benefit, so. Color with Stella, yes! So you can use any color of your water-based ink pads and put that ink right on the block like this. And um, so I'm working my way left to right and I know it's a little bit light there, but I don't wanna keep going over it while it's wet. So I'm just gonna keep going and then I'll come back to it when I come back for a little more. So I need a little bit more water on here. Oh yeah, I try to answer questions. If somebody, if I miss answering a question, um, because so many comments are coming through, like um, sometimes you guys help each other out and answer them too. But Cindy asks, I have a question. Do you designate your blending brushes to a certain color? Ha, no, I am not um, a demonstrator that designates my blending brushes to a certain color. Now, they do end up taking on a certain color and after I rinse them out, because I do rinse them out. And um, I like to just have like six or seven of them and I'll use them for whatever colors, right? Um, but sometimes if they turn blue, I'll use that one for the blue. Even though there's no color really in it, it still has that remnants of the blue color. So um, I don't. Um, do you use the watercolor paper or will regular basis? So this is just regular vanilla, you guys. This is the regular vanilla. I would use regular white too. Um, I don't generally buy watercolor paper. I will use the shimmery white paper or thick white paper if I'm usually like aqua painters to color. Um, Sue Somerville would like to do the benefit. You will text me a message. Awesome, thanks Sue, I really appreciate that. Um, oh, Philly said October 14th in Nova Scotia. So it's coming up, hopefully they don't get hit with the Fiona. Yeah, yes, hopefully they don't. All right, so I'm just gonna keep working my way here. Um, I wash mine, so Feline says she washes her. Now, I do know demonstrators that will keep a color for each blending brush and like put them in a little baggie and then just keep them as that color. 
and that's what they use for each color. Um, uh, where, okay, when you use the Stella pen, do you squeeze the wink of Stella? No, I'm not even squeezing it. There's Stella that is already in that brush tip, and because you're adding water to the block, I'm not squeezing Stella into it. If you do, you might accidentally get way too much Stella in, and it's just really Stella-y, if that's a word, um, but it's super cool. You just keep going like this, and I don't know, like if you can see see shimmer there there was just a little bit of shimmer kind of poking through but in all honesty this whole thing is so shimmery so um, I am doing so my Stella pen has been filled up with rubbing alcohol already so that's kind of what is going on with my um, my Stella so she's been rejuvenated okay so she's got her Stella CPR now this pumpkin is a lot lighter than this pumpkin and if you're happy with it you could go with it lighter but what I am going to do, now that this is full of, um, oh, you can see it, perfect. This is full of uh, Stella to me. So I don't want to dip that back into my block. So I'm going to take a paper towel, and I'm just going to clean that off really good with my paper towel that has all these inks. From me, this is blue is from uh, my blending brush. Got, got clean, my blue blending brush. Okay, so I'm going to dip back in here, get a little bit of ink on there. And then what I'm gonna do is add a little water to it. And that's gonna kinda get my palette very nice. And I'm gonna dip and drip around in there and get some color. And now I'm gonna go over for round two. And it's gonna make it a little bit darker. Now you gotta be careful though, because I am not using watercolor paper. I'm not using thick paper. It is starting to take on like a little curling to me, but um, that will dry, and once I get it planted onto my brown piece, it's gonna be fine. Um, do you refill Stella with alcohol or water? I refill it with rubbing alcohol, like whatever isopropyl, whatever percentage. Yep. Um, some people do a combination of water and isopropyl alcohol. I just do the rubbing alcohol. <laughs> you can know if you've refilled your Stella by just putting it up to your nose, and if it smells like rubbing alcohol, then you know you've filled it with rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna drip another bit of water. The thing is I'm not doing more than a drip at a time because I don't want this block to become saturated with water. Um, you guys, I did do a tip. No, I think Kelly did it actually. Um, if you go, I'll show you another little trick here to get you guys liking YouTube a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna finish coloring my pumpkin and I'm gonna show you. Uh, we've been doing Tip Tuesdays and Technique Thursdays since the fall of 2020, you guys. Every one of those is out on my channel on YouTube and it's all in my video section um, in YouTube. All right, I'm happy with my pumpkin. Like it? And then close up, there's hopefully some shimmer depending on how the light hits it. So when you're done using your Stella pen, you definitely do want to, you definitely want to wash it out, you know, not wash it out, but wipe it out. And then I'm saving this because this is still good ink on my block. <laughs> I know ink isn't that expensive, but um, that's how you can you know, save it for the next time. So here you guys go. Watch this if you're um, um, curious where to find how to Stella, fill it. Because I'm not going to show you how to spell, fill a Stella pen, but I'm going to show you where to find it. So we just were in my Cards by Christine face, uh, YouTube channel, right? So I was in Cards by Christine. And if you go to the little magnifying glass, we just search for bow maker. So if we do cards by Christine and we type in Stella, Ella, 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 there is a video here. Let's see where it's called Refresh Stella. Let's go Stella Pen. I'm wondering if it'll be under Stella Pen. There, well, there, oh, there's splatter with Stella. So Kelly showed you how to splatter with the Stella pen and how to start your Stella pen because there's a black ring on it. And then there's another one. I know it's called this, but it's called Refresh Your Stella. So if you go Refresh Your Stella, so make note, you guys, it's called Refresh Your Stella. Tip Tuesday from over a year ago, it says Refresh Your Stella. Kelly did this for me back when she was doing Tip Tuesdays, okay? So lots of tips out there. So you wanna watch that Refresh Your Stella so that that's how you can fill up a Stella pen. So we're gonna give this little dude a hot second. <laughs> he's a little bit, he's a little damp. So we're gonna let him 
settle here for a second. And we're going to finish doing a little bit of gluing. So this little guy back here, you've got three options with him. One is you could cut it in half vertically and have part of it showing on that side and part showing on that side. You could cut it in half horizontally. You're welcome, Sue. And then you could have part up there and part down here. Or you could put it off to a side, right? And so that's what we did here. We just kind of glued it off to the side. So I want to make sure I just get glue in this top left corner. And then I'm going to attach as I do that. I'm going to, oh, I just glued the wrong side, but that's okay. Um, you guys won't see that. But when you do good die cutting, the rough side is generally the bottom and the nice rolled edge is the top. But I did stamp my back better. So that's why I think I ended up with it. So that that top is just a little rough, but nobody's really going to notice that. Um, you betcha, Melody. Okay, so there's the banner. And hi, Cindy Miller. All right, hi, Carla Lake. All right, so we gave that guy, oh, we're going to glue this. So let's glue this on the inside. So yeah, when you guys get card kits from me, the kit comes pretty much exactly like what you see here, except for the stamping. No stamping or color is added to anything. And if, um, like in this case, the pumpkin is stamped on a focal image, if you don't have the pumpkin, you could stamp something else. I'm gonna give that one more second to keep drying. And I'm gonna add some black dimensionals. So, of course I put it on the wrong side. So black dimensionals get their work out this time of year because you have fall and Halloween cards. You've got lots of browns and blacks being used. And so it's a great time to pull out the black dimensionals. So then this one goes over here. Got that, nope lied you guys we got to put our ribbon behind there oh nobody caught that but I'm so happy I did <laughs> hang on so we're just going to take put a little tear and tape there on the one side you guys I love my tear and tape it was funny Karen Westein was here at class and she said that she's used I don't remember what your term your your time frame was Karen but you use more tear and tape maybe in the last two years than you have in, in like the last 10 years. So I'm catching the tear and tape back here and I'm gonna make a loop and then I'm gonna bring this tail out like that. And then I have this piece ready to go over the top of that like that. And we're gonna grab a little bit longer. So that is gonna be over here. All right, so we're still good there. I think I might pick that off. Sometimes I pick off the tear and tape, sometimes I leave it. That's a little higher because you've got extra fabric there or extra ribbon there. So this is gonna come over here. Glad I remembered to put that ribbon down. Okay, because this guy's gonna eventually come over here. So I gave this guy a little time to dry. I did this all a little bit backwards because I was really wanting this guy to get dry. So instead of adding more liquid glue, you guys, I'm gonna take the safe route and just add some tear and tape on the back here. All right, Donna, glad that you'll catch the replay. You made me a fan of the tear and tape. Yes, you guys, tear and tape. So if you have a hard time picking it off though, grab your pick tool because I've, if you just, if you have it pressed down hard enough and you take your pick tool, you can kind of wedge right underneath and it kind of lifts up so it's easy to get like that. All right, so you guys, I did not use more liquid glue on this because it was really, it's a little damp. So we're just gonna put that right in the center. Now for this one, I use liquid glue and a dimensional on this side. So I always, people ask, well, what did you use? Some, hi, Elizabeth Merkel. Sometimes I do joint. Like this time I'm gonna put a little liquid glue on the, the right side and I put a dimensional on the left because our pumpkin has already popped up. Thank you. So they said in class on Saturday that there was a lot of people that liked this, class, this card specifically. So. Yes, Rose loves the tear and tape too. It is awesome tear and tape. All right, so grab your ribbon scissors. And Cindy's been, I've converted a lot of people to liquid glue, you guys, from the tape runner. I just, I I can't even say I have a love-hate relationship with tear, the tape runner. I just have a hate relationship with tear, uh, this stuff right here. I have it here just in case I need it for something. But I generally, you guys, I don't know. Do you have, have you used it? Maybe once I've used it. So, all right, so we've got, our little ribbon coming out like that. And hi, Patsy Roberts. Yes, Sue loves this card. This card is a pretty one. And the layout, you guys, if anybody does make multiple cards, the layout is so cool. 
All right, champagne rhinestones for this one. Rhinestone cowboy. So, got some, like a big or a small one. I mean, sorry, a big or a medium one, and then two small ones. So, I got two over there and one guy down there. All right. So Rose Love is her liquid glue, too. Yes, liquid glue is the bomb. All right, the bomb dizzle. You guys, that's it. That's what I got for my pumpkin-licious card here. I'm trying to get some Stella showing off on that pumpkin, but not, yeah. So you could have definitely used a blender pen, and it would have given it a different look, a more solid look, but this looks more washed, like watercolory. Um, yeah, and then here's our inside, you guys. Now, I could have stamped hello on the inside, but I think I'm going to leave it late on blank, so whoever gets this as their prize can do what they want with it. All right, we've got two done. Yay. We've got three more to do. So the, the fifth card is just a bonus card for you guys. It was my mystery card, and I kept it out just to, I kept an extra kit just to, sh I'm going to show you guys how I made mine. So, all right, we're going to do this one next. Oh, I love it. So um, you have to practice with your pickup tool. It works so easily for you. Yes, it practice makes perfect, you guys. I, I can't agree with that more. This one is so pretty with the sunflower. So this was the last card I designed for this class. And I had this sunflower left and I thought, what can we use to bring in like the bottles? Because I could see this on the top of this bottle. So the stamp set is called Vintage Christmas. It's got this bottle, which I thought look, looked really cool. Okay, now if you don't have Vintage Christmas, do not fret because another option you could use is bottled happiness. Now the bottle to me isn't as cute as this is with this card, because this is more vintage, like vintage Christmas. It's more a vintage -y bottle. This one could work. Um, so in your kit, you'll have a, the bottle. And if you don't have either of them, you could just take a sponge dauber or a blending pen and just color your bottle with ink. And and that would be fine. You don't want to give it any kind of color. So, um, so yeah, so that's, we're going to pull those things. Um, so we need this color. We're done with him, done with him and him. And we need this, some of this, these guys, blending brush and crumb cake. Now I did pull in a sentiment, sending cheer is also from the bottled happiness. So kept it within those sets. And um, for those of you who got the kit from me, let's look what you got because you're not gonna get a die cut piece. Again, this is a focal image. So when you get the kit from me, this is exactly what they got. You're gonna have your designer paper and you're gonna have this piece of paper, which is what the size that you need for stamping and then you'll die cut. Now, if you don't have that, you could use this to do something else with, but otherwise this, um, that's here, your little tag is there and the little bottles there and you guys, your little bowsies are there. So I do make all your little bows like that, okay? <laughs> so you got everything you need in there except for the stamps and your ink and your adhesives. Okay, so let's grab the kit, my kit here. And you guys know by the magic of TV, I already have mine stamped and die cut out. So I showed you the little white piece of paper. You're gonna want to use that sunflower stamp and I used espresso ink. So espresso ink is right here. So that's the color I used. You're gonna stamp that on that white piece of paper and die cut it. Now if you don't have it, again, pick something else that you have that is florally that would look nice at the top of a bottle. All right, so got a little tag, I got a bottle. Now these are from the Scalloped Contour, and then this is some of the Rustic Harvest designer paper. You guys are wondering about this. All right, Feline, dinner is cooked. Enjoy your dinner, have a good movie with your mama. I love it. Um, mine looks more white, right? Cause this is black and white, but I wanted it to, oh, hi Roxanne Emerson, first time watching, whoop, whoop. Okay, this is colored, you guys. So. If you don't like the white, color it with any color that you want. And so I wanted it to look more naturally color. So we, we're gonna use crumb cake to do that. And then you'll have two mats that are the same. One is white and one is espresso. And this is embossed with the time-worn type embossing folder. Okay, 
So that's what you guys have in your kit in addition to your base, which is, it's all about the base, right? No trouble. So burnish your edge, vertical card. And so let's do some stamping. Oh no, let's do our blending. Cause I have a, I always use a little mat because the mat here, this paper, it's not a mat, it's just a piece of paper. It helps to keep all the color contained on a piece of paper. <laughs> so Roxy and I hope you learned something tonight. So this is my blending brush. Um, uh, I use it for a crumb cake until we're done with class and then I will rinse it out and get all the color out as I can. So yes, Donna says, welcome to the party. Woo -woo. All right, so crumb cake and we're just gonna blend color on. Now, if we look at the card sample, we don't need to worry about this area right here because it gets covered up, right? So blending brush works to do this. You could also use a sponge dauber. You could also use a sponge. Stampin' Up! used to have sponges back in the day. A couple years ago, they got rid of them. So you can see here, I'm starting to add color on that side just to make it look more antique -y. Thanks for sharing, Betty Ray. Hi, Arliss. Oh my goodness, Arliss, I just got this card. I don't know, it was postmarked a long time ago, but oh, Arliss, thank you for sharing with me your mystery card night card from last month. I believe this was August with the slices, and I read your letter, and I cried, and I'm going to write you back. Um, my plan is to write to you. So I have big hugs and love and everybody send some big hugs and love to Arliss because she needs all of our support right now. So Arliss, I got your card and it's giving me goosebumps and I love you girl. And I want the best for you always. And so I'm going to reply back. I, <laughs> oh, I'm going to cry. So everybody send love out to Arliss. Okay. Uh, she's one of my Stampin' Buddies who lives about a couple hours from me, two, two and a half hours from me. And she just shared some news with me that made me cry. So um, we're all sending our love and hugs to you, Arliss. I'm glad you could join us tonight. <laughs> we're doing the Rustic Harvest Cards, Arliss. All right, you guys. So that's what I'm doing. And you remember here what I said? You do not need to worry about um, things. Look at all those hearts coming in for you, Arliss. Oh, Arliss, we love you. <laughs> so big hugs to you. So that's, I didn't do that middle section because of that getting covered up. So that's all we're doing here for the crumb cake. All right, so we can set that off to the side um, for now. Um, but we do need to do a little bit of stamping. Oh, Arliss, you're getting so much love right now. We're here for you, girl. We're gonna do our little bottle and we're gonna do our inside and we have our tag. So let's, you guys are amazing. Thanks for sharing love with Arliss. We're gonna grab a piercing mat and we're going to use that underneath because we're gonna be working with photopolymer stamps. And so that's always a good tool to have to help with a little bit of extra foam underneath um, for stamping. And our little tag goes this way. Hi, Jody Storman. All right, so we're gonna do crumb cake. Now, oh, Arliss, thank you. You're, oh, yes, hugs and love to you. So grab your bottle, and we're going to ink it up. So I didn't hesitate giving you guys a bottle punch because it's reversible. You get two shots at it, and also because um, it's a photopolymer stamp. And you can hover over the top until you get it lined up where you think it needs to go, and then you just go for it. And you press down really good. And if you don't like the way it is, you can flip it over and do the other side. But if you're happy with it the way it is, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Yep. So I'm happy with it. We're going to let it be. And that, oh, we're not done though. Oh man, we got to do our inside. So let's show you guys the inside. So I'm going to stamp a bottle over there as well on the right hand side, right there. Ink up one more time. Go right about there. And then now the little spriggy thing. That spriggy thing also comes from this bottled happiness. So there's the sprig there. So that's from that bottled happiness. And when I did it in crushed curry, and when you go to ink it up, if you don't ink up the bottom part of the stem, you don't need to mask. But you're just going to grab, you can see I'm not uh, inking up the tail of that. So now you can hover over and don't worry about where the tail is because you didn't put any ink there. Had you inked the whole thing up, you would have needed to put like a piece of paper right here to 
and you'll make sure you don't get the little tail on the outside of the bottle, okay? So there's that, that's our inside. Now we need a sentiment. It's sending cheer right here. <laughs> that rhymed. So pinky goes out, isn't that funny? You put your pinky out like that. It's like, it feels normal to do that. Where's the card? We're gonna see which way that goes. Yep, that's right. Okay, just wanted to double check. It's gonna go right there. Sending cheer. Now I think we might be done stamping because I already had stamped that and I apparently didn't put a scrap in to stamp again with you. So I'm good with that though. All right, so let's get these out of the way. And we're done with that. All right, assembly time. So some notes. Don't get glue happy, guys. We got to get our ribbon down behind here. Okay, so and we have a little coloring to do. So we're going to use our colored pencils. So the colored pencils come in two assortments. All right, G-Max, I will catch you later. Uh, there's one and two. <laughs> and so I pulled Crushed Curry, Early Espresso, Daffodil, and um, Curry, Crushed Curry, Crushed Curry. So what I did is I used Espresso in the centers. Oh, you wanna see me color close up here. Let's do Espresso in the middle of the flowers and we're gonna do old olive for our leaves. So this might be the most time consuming part of this project is coloring. <laughs> Pencils are great for something like this because it gives softness to it versus blends. Um, plus with blends, your marker tips are not gonna allow you to get into such a small little area. Um, you people ask, well, what do you use to sharpen your pencils? I'll be honest with you guys. I uh, was selling Mary Kay back in 2000, and somehow I ended up with some pencil sharpeners. And so I use my Mary Kay pencil sharpener. I've had it for 20-some years now, since 2001. So I've had it for 21 years. <laughs> That's what I use. And when you think you're done, go back and look and see what leaves you missed. Because needless to say, you always go back and like, oh, there's one right there too. So got that done. And then I used crushed curry. Now, this does not look like crushed curry. It looks like poop. I know it does, but um, trust me, it's crushed curry. And what I did with the crushed curry is I did it near the center of the sunflowers. So just where those lines kind of show, like that. And then I'm going to do it on this one as well. Like just around. I am not the most crazy color or -er, guys. I just... I don't mind it, but I don't love it. It's somewhere in the middle for me. I would take it over fussy cutting though. Hi, Barbara Gabby. Hope your meeting went great tonight. And then you're gonna use some Daffodil Delight over the whole area where the flower, oh, I just colored, oh no, it looks like a petal, I'm good. All right, so keep coloring your flower, or your petals. And there are little like circly ones. Oh, look at this, you guys. This is funny. Perfect example. Look at it and figure out what you missed. I missed this right here on my sample card. I never even had colored them in. I <laughs> oh, it's funny. All right, so we're gonna keep her color. Keep her moving, guys. We're gonna color, color, color. And the little guys over here are yellow. Those little dudes are yellow over here and there. And then there's two more. Okay, so. When you think you have it all, double check to make sure you haven't missed anything. But those are the four colors I use. And then what happens is you wanna use a blender pen to soften everything. Hi, Bonnie, L'Esperance. All right, so softening. No, you don't wanna go over everything at once. You wanna pick a color, stick with it. So I'm gonna start with yellow and I'm just gonna, okay, I'm gonna tell you, so here's before and after. Let's see if I can camera is really zoomed up. So you can see there's like color pencil lines all over and there's white areas, splotchy. So this is your before. If you're at the eye exam, this is option number one. And now what's gonna happen is we're gonna take our blender pen and we're gonna softly color over and blend their colors together. So you're picking up this colored pencil and you're just spreading it around in the area where you want it, being careful not to keep going over and over the same area because it's got a solution in it 
and it will make your paper matty, I guess is the word, mushy-ish. Okay, so once you're done with the yellow, you take it and you wipe it, wipe it out, and then pick your next color. So I'm gonna do brown. Okay, so there's our brown, and then you wipe it out until there's no color, keeping the same tip. And then you can use the green. Like I've had one of these blender pens and it has been around for a long time because they last for, I can't say forever, because forever is forever, right? So they don't last forever, but they last for a very long, long time. So do you guys remember pilly? Pilly, kind of gets pilly. That's a good word for it too. Mushy, like paper paper that is wet gets like milly, pushy. Like, yeah, that's their good words, yep. Um, <laughs> eye exam, yep. So here's option number two at the eye exam. Which one do you pick? Do you like one or two? This is option one and I cannot show you option, nope, sorry, this is option two. I cannot show you option one because that one's gone. <laughs> All right, but using this blender pen is an amazing tool you, um, thing to use. Let's go back out, but that's a little too far, so we'll go back there. You can fill them. Yeah, you can fill these. Tell me more, Miss Linda Hall. How do you fill your blender pens? I don't think I've ever filled them. I honestly, I've probably bought two sets of them in my entire life, that's it. Okay, let's talk about this. All right, this guy gets glued on our inside. So we'll do that first. So open this one up. <laughs> Melanie Miller says number two. I love it, awesome. Uh, I would pick number two as well. You know, I always trick, I always think it's a trick when you're at the eye exam and he's telling you option one, option two, option one, option two. I'm like, they both look the same. Is this a trick question? So there's our mat for the top that will go I always look at it to see which way the words are going or choose your words. I think it actually goes like that. Words are hard. Okay, that looks right to me. So now this one's gonna go right onto your card front like that. Now this is where the trick comes in. A lot of people are like, well, we gotta get the ribbon underneath there, but you wanna get it in the right spot. So here's my tip. Put this down, there's no glue on it. Just set it down where it needs to go, right? Something like that. Then what you're gonna do, we'll use black dimensionals in this case, since hey, our, the back side is black anyways, and they're sitting right here, so let's use them. And I'm not going to pick off the bottom two, so either end here, not the bottom two. And what we're gonna do is pick off the top. I make him repeat the option several sometimes. Yeah, me too. I'm like, can you do it again? I need to see better. All right, so there's our sample. So now I've got the top four picked off, but not the bottom two, and now I'm gonna set this right on my card front. So I know that's where I want it, is something like here. I was off to the left and down a little lower. And now what's gonna happen is that's gonna catch the designer paper, and now you've got the ability to put your tear and tape on. I'm gonna prep one on my hand here, and then we're gonna put this on that back right corner. Grab your ribbon. Now I have a tail here that is already at a slant from making um, the card for the card benefit. So I'm going to utilize that. I'm going to put that right where I want it coming out something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to, so I just caught the tear and tape and then I'm going to loop it back like that, flip it over and put that tear and tape right there. And I've now in essence, not wasted any of it because I can use that for something else and catch my tag right there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that like that and put dimensional, Oop, nope, these get glue. So these will get picked off now. And then I will be picking that off because I want it flat and adhered right there. And we're gonna use liquid glue on the rest. So that's gonna go right up there. Nice, nice, nice. Hi, Annie Hulbert. All right, the ribbon. If you guys are wondering where that ribbon comes from, it is also in the mini catalog. Um, I don't remember exactly which suite it's in, but you can find the ribbon at a glance in the back here. Uh, it's called Natural Half Inch Woven Ribbon on page 25. It's part of the Holly Berry Suite. So that's where that ribbon comes from. All right. So, so far, so good. Got fuzzes everywhere here. All right, now our bottle. 
Our bottle's gonna get glued flat. And let's see here. It's gonna go right. I put it right on the bottom of the stitched area, like where that stitched line is, like that. And for this, I'm going to pop up some dimensionals way at the top. And then I actually wanna glue the bottom flat. So again, this is another one where I use two different adhesives. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of flat gluing it down there. So the bottom will look like it's attached more to the bottle and the top's gonna be popped up. So this is gonna go like that. Highland up Broined. All right, so there's what we have so far. And then we're gonna grab a white dimensional. They're buried over here. And I'm gonna use a dimensional on the back side of my tag. That's gonna go right over here. And lo and behold, I did not put a, <laughs> a bow in my kit. So I'm gonna rob Peter to pay Paul. So I'm Paul for right now. Somebody else is Peter and I'll replace it later in life <laughs> before that kit gets mailed out. <laughs> and so you guys in your kit should have a little baby bow. I'm gonna put the glue dot right where I want the bow to go. And then I'm going to set my bow right into, right into that. Trim your tail a little bit. Shorten up those tails. And nice, very nice. We didn't Stella anything. So what's the magical thing we could Stella? Hmm. So if you do want to Stella your flowers, you got to be careful. Again, if you're going to do all the yellows, you don't want to kind of contaminate the brown area because the colors will bleed together. So you just want to lightly go over yellow, clean it out. And the other thing is you could do this whole background here, the designer paper, because it's printed on. So it's not going to bleed. So do that. I'm not going to hit any of that background because that'll get mushy. But you could hover over and do some of the, the embossed area. All right. In this one... There are some brushed metallic, no, they're rustic metallic dots. Oh, you guys are loving it. Yes, I like it. All right, so you'll either have too big and a small or too small and a big, I believe. So we're gonna put one there, one over here. Pick tool, Sue Volts. Putty end on that side picks up your gems. <laughs> okay, in case you guys didn't know that. And so these are these rustic metallic dots, you guys. They're so pretty. One of my, I think they're my top three for favorite embellishments in the annual catalog. And it looks like we didn't forget anything. Isn't that one cool? Oh, I'm so happy with this one. Very, very pretty. So thank you so much. All right. You guys like it too. Yay. All right, so let's put this away. And then we have our gourmet card, is what my mom calls the card that's always the over-the-top one. This one, you guys, uh, Diane Bogenhagen happened to stop over, and she helped kit this one up. And so this one, we call it the gourmet card. There's so many pieces in this one. So let's transition over to that one. And let's move this stuff out of the way. And these are done for the moment. Okay. We will need espresso ink. And what's on our inside? I think a leaf. Very nice. Cajun craze. And a leaf. All right, so here's our leaf. And Cajun is right here. Oh, you guys like this one too. Good, good, good. All right, so we need the leaf. And now, back to our stamparatus though. So... We had used this for memento, right? So what we need to do is clean it. So you're gonna wanna grab your chamois and you just blot that. Yep, pick up your chamois, put your fingers on it. It's okay to pick it up. It is wet and damp and it comes out of the case and I would definitely do this to clean it up. Thanks, Sue Somerville. Um, appreciate that. I'm glad that you guys did. Yeah, these cards are so pretty for fall. Love it, love it, love it. So this time though, you guys are gonna want to use your little label if you have it and do espresso with for the color instead of black. 
The espresso matches this card better. Oh man, oh man, oh man. So I'm very strong apparently. So what happens you guys, <laughs> if you try to open up an ink pad, not where it's supposed to be opened, it starts to bulge and um, crack. And that is what has, was happening with this one. And I got it right back in there and I'm gonna be more careful with it next time. All right, so um, sometimes when people transition from the old ink pads to the new ink pads, they don't catch where to open them up. And so sometimes people will start to pick them up on this other end over here. And um, yeah, that's not as good. <laughs> that's not where it's supposed to be picked up. And that happens. That's part of learning how to use supplies, right? So there is the ink. And we're gonna put that right on here. Um, Francis, it has water. And I do rinse it out with the water from my sink, but I do have on the, on the counters over here, my tables, I should say, like up in there, I have a spray bottle of Stampin' Mist at every, like every two people. So people can spray their chamois with Stampin' Mist as well. So there, Stampin' Mist is a conditioner. So if you do want to spray that into your chamois, it doesn't hurt anything and it actually would help the cards. So that comes out. So there's the wishing you the loveliest day. I'm going to just stick this piece of paper right there. And um, we're going to grab a dauber. And <laughs> we got to use the ink again. So I'm going to open this up a little more carefully. And we're going to just take and sponge a little bit of the espresso. You guys, I, did, I know it's espresso, but I like to say espresso around the edges just to make it look softer. All right, so that's going here. All right, that's it for that. And then on our inside, oh, we're not done. You guys check out here. There's a pumpkin, okay? So I kind of worked ahead and didn't show you all the bits and parts, <laughs> apparently. So this is a lot going on here, guys. Uh, there are lots of pieces, so be careful. So here's your espresso strip, which is embossed with a timber embossing folder. You have a piece of ribbon, which is from the Sahara Sand and um, Old Olive Twill Combo Pack. You will have your banner like this, ready to stamp. That one's done. This little sprig of flowery leaf action is from the Sunflower Dyes in Copper Foil. You have a pumpkin part and a pumpkin top and a bottom pumpkin. Now, all these dyes are from the Rustic Harvest, like Hello Harvest set. You have a little squiggly for the mossy meadow, the little top for your pumpkin. <clears throat> the leaf die cut is out of the designer series paper. <laughs> Thanks, Linda Bailey. The leaf here is from, we talked about it, the leaf combo pack with the amber gems. And it's embossed with painted texture embossing folder. Oh, we got another banner. So you guys, in your kits, you're gonna have a piece of white stitched rectangle and you're gonna have two of these actually cut out of the middle. So instead of using more white paper, what we did is we cut them out of the middle so that it wasn't using more paper, right? And we do that because it is gonna get covered up. So this will go here and this will go here. So that's us being paper conservationists right there, All right? And that goes on the crumb cake mat. And then you'll have a white mat and you're gonna have your mossy metal base, okay. But while I have the ink pad open, I was talking that there's more to color and it's this pumpkin. So you're gonna just use your either sponge dauber. Alisa uh, Smith, that she, like she loves the leaf embossed with that folder. Yes, it is super cool. It just gives it enough texture to make it look like they're the veins of the leaf. Super, super cool. All right, so that goes around there. And you can see that when I put this up against some white, you can kind of see that there's the brown sponging around the edge. It just gives it character. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do it around the edge of this one as well. Just a little bit of brown color. And go around the horn with the treble horn. There, I think that's it. Oh, be careful. That's it for that color. Then <clears throat> the leaf on the inside. There's just a little baby leaf on the inside and that's with Cajun craze. And so we'll put that little leaf down there. Vertical card, so make sure you have your paper the right way. So that's it 
for that one. And I think we can get glue happy. All right, let's do this first though, our base. Just burnish it with your bone folder. <clears throat> glue happy. All right, so let's do what we can. Um, when you have the inside like this cut out, you have to be very careful putting adhesive. If you put adhesive all the way around the back and push it down, you're gonna get glue through the hole onto your work surface. So you have to, what I would do personally is I would put the glue around here and then set my paper into it. So I'm just gonna put my rectangle right there. And then when I set this down, I don't have to risk the glue going through it. Hi, Linda Champ. Hi, Patricia Piscopio. All right, so that's going on here. So this is from the stitched rectangle dies. And then this one's gonna go down here to finish off the bottom part. It's like a little table kind of that it's setting on. All right, now don't worry about the seam because we're gonna use tear and tape on the back. And then we're gonna run our ribbon over that seam. And so I'm gonna need two pieces prepped. Is the DSP square? I don't think, I can't remember if I did it or not. I just know that this is three and 13 sixteenths. I might have cut them at four because that was easy that I didn't have to have a little sliver of paper at the end. So what matters the most, Sherry, is that this is, oh, I, I'm sorry, it's three and a half. All right, Cindy Bassett, we'll catch you later. Um, three and a half is the width. Whatever the length is, it doesn't matter because you're gonna put this one inch piece over whatever's extra down here. So three and a half wide. Um, I, I think I cut your pieces at three and a half by four because four columns makes you know a piece of paper like four inches four inches four inches you get three columns out of it so every four inches so i probably cut everything at three and a half and then i cut them by four if i you know what you know how we can check wait one moment please follow the instructions on the pin pad hang on whoa we're gonna put that little dude back in here so inquiring minds want to know you know how we can know we look in this kit look at this kit it's full it's got a lot of stuff going on Oh yeah, I probably cut it by four inches. Oh yeah, so I did. I cut it at three and a half and then I cut it by four. Um, so that would get you down a little bit past where it needs to be, but I didn't want to have like a little half inch strip like left over at the end. Because then I sit with that half inch strip for like for the rest of my life, right? So this way it gets put on your card. All right, so good question. See, we can figure that out when I have a kit here. All right, I know I need to put a little baby bow in this one. So. Let's move them back over there. And we peeled off our tear and tape. Now this ribbon kind of sits right a hair over the edge of the espresso. And I like to look at it from the front to make sure my ribbon's straight. Then I'm gonna flip it over and add a little more tear and tape to make my tear and tape my ribbon sandwich. <clears throat> then we can use some dimensionals and I popped this up onto that crumb cake mat. I'm going to town, you guys. I'm putting nine of them on. All right, and then pick all of those off. One false swoop, yep. And then that's gonna go on the crumb cake. And then flip the crumb cake over and that gets some liquid glue. As long as you got your glue open, you can glue your inside in like that. So the crumb cake goes on the top. And so now we've got like the front kind of prepped and ready. Good, and then you can grab your white mat for your inside. Goes here. All right, let's put our pumpkin together. So I'm gonna use the black dimensionals for that. So I'm gonna put three of them down the middle skinnier pumpkin piece. And that gets put right onto that back piece. 
it's really looking like a pumpkin now. And then I'm gonna grab a glue dot and I'm going to put that on the back side of the stem. I, oh, I should say the front side of the stem here. And then I'm gonna catch the pumpkin with that. So now it's attached like that. You could have also put the glue dot on the back side of this and connected it. All right, then my leaf. Oh, linen thread. <laughs> so apparently I have no linen thread down here in the hive at the moment. Oh, I do, it's on the table. Ha ha, hang on. Da, da, da. All right, you guys have eight inches in your kit. This I remember. So you have eight inches. So eight inches, and you glued your life under the white layer. I did, yep. But I'm gonna show you how I do it in a second. We'll get there. Um, so, oh, Cheryl, that was your, I was reading your question. <laughs> your yellow leaf grab it. Oh, where did it go? Right. Where did you guys see it went? Because you're right. Where You glued your life under the white layer. Did I really? <laughs> you're so funny. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's how you guys, this is, oh, that's the wrong one. Hang on. <clears throat> Okay, so here's an idea for you guys. This is a tip. In case you ever do what I just did and you need to um, get this layer up, what you do is you take your glue scissors. Let's see if I can see what side it's on. You're funny, Cheryl. Thank you so much for seeing that. You're amazing. Oh, right there it is. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors, you snip your glue dots, or I'm sorry, your, your dimensionals in half. Look at that. Good call. Oh my gosh. You guys. So if you ever wonder where stuff goes and you don't have somebody watching over your shoulder and keeping a good eye on you, that's where stuff can disappear to. Ha! Huh? Look at that. And I didn't even notice it because there was black and white on the inside right there. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So here's my the rest of my tip. So I still have dimensional right there, right? And it's still the right height. Now what I'll do, this ended up being a good tip for you guys. Now what I'm gonna do is take my glue and I'm just gonna put liquid glue back where my dimensionals are. But to help with the situation, I'm going to put one more glue or dimensional right there, okay? So, oh, lifesaver, you're a rock star. <laughs> oh, crisis diverted, you guys, wowzers. Okay, and then we found our leaf and we're good again. Whew. Good catch. Gold star tonight for Sherry Stewart. Boom. Yes. Okay. And you guys learned a trick about how to cut off. So I got that liquid glue on there and now it's just got to have a second to kind of like help adhere. So I'm just going to put, what am I going to put? My scissors over the, the top of that. All right. And that'll be back to square. So we were going off of our linen. See where mistakes happen? We make um, extra tips for you guys. So your linen thread is <laughs> eight inches. <laughs> yes, real life tip is actually, yep, Judy, you got it right. Take your linen thread and you're gonna cut it in half. So now you have two four inch pieces, right? Once you take it and fold it in half again, so you have a fold. You're gonna take that fold and push the fold down through your leaf. So fold from top down, all right? So catch that. And now what you're gonna do is get those two loops on the back side here, find those loops, and you're gonna put your tails through them. <laughs> I talked to Bonnie was in class on, on Saturday, and she's like, I never remember which way to do it. And she said, she's been, for five years, she does never remember. And I said, I think it took me about five years to always remember to do the fold with the loop down. And then just figure out which side you want your, so the great thing about it is if you do it backwards, you can just flip your leaf over. But I want my little loopies on that side. And then that's all that's used to hang. It's like, just like a little tag now that's gonna be on there. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited we have a leaf again. Oh, I would not have known about it until it came time to actually put it down. And Sherry, I thought you were really asking about like how to put it on the card. And I'm like, oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Just hang tight. We'll get there. And all of a sudden it's like, no, you're trying to tell me I lost it. I love it. That so teamwork makes the dream work, you guys. It sure does. All right, so we're getting all our bits and parts prepped here. This is back on track. Now, how would I do this? Now is the, the question. So <clears throat> 
I have a couple different ideas and I usually go with easiest for me. <clears throat> you guys could probably look at my sample and know, okay, well, the pumpkin's going to go right about here. The leaf is going to go here. But when I was designing this card, I didn't know how everything was going to lay out for me. So it kind of worked opposite. And this is why I like to show you guys like how I actually put it together when I design the card. And so what I'm going to do is cut a strip here and put this across the top. And then what I'm going to do is put some more dimensionals at the bottom and one here. So this is what my back looks like. Now I'm not going to pick off the top one, but I am going to pick off these bottom ones. And I mean bottom because when I flip it over, they're on the bottom. Now when I set this down onto my card, I know I want this tag to be so that I don't see any of this Sahara sand there, but I just see the coming out the sides. That was my goal. And now I have the ability to stick the things in how I want them. So now what I'll do is put a little bit of liquid glue on my pumpkin. And we got these things ready to go. So our, my pumpkin now can come, got it kind of hanging out over here. And I do have it over the ribbon. So he's there. And that liquid glue, I have a moment in time before that's actually dry. So now I can take and put liquid glue at the bottom of this one with my dimensionals at the top. And that's going to tuck in here. And then I've got a dimensional here. And I still have time in case this one I put it on, I want to rearrange and finagle. Now this one I tucked on the side over here. Okay, so do you like it? Like, does it look good? Nope, oh my gosh, I forgot that I actually sponged the edges of my leaf there. So you still have the opportunity or ability. I didn't press anything down very hard. And I can still grab my sponge dauber and put a little bit, I looked at it, I'm like, oh, it was actually a little bit dark on those sides. You can take your dauber and get some of those leaves on the outside. Okay, now I'm gonna stick this right back in here. Okay, and then my leaf was here, hanging out, waiting patiently to, for me to figure out what I want to do with life. Okay, and now it's like, oh, I want to see that guy up a little bit. Okay, you can play with your, you. this is where you get to feel like um, a floral person, <laughs> a florist, <laughs> a florist. Okay, that's the word I was looking for. And then um, I'm not pressing it down quite yet either because I have this little guy yet, and he's going to need... I'm going to use a little mini glue dot and I'm going to use it right there and I'm going to put one more at the base down here and now because I didn't squish that leaf down all the way I can gently pick this up and kind of tuck it in and that's where that's going to go now it's like okay does my pumpkin look good where I like it no if I want I could just move it over like you still have a little bit of wiggle room sometimes right so but all in all like that's how I kind of put that together. You also in your kit have this little greeny piece. And so let's take your Stella pen and let's Stella that good. And then while you're at it, you could Stella your yellow leaf. You could lightly go over that little guy. You could do a little bit on your pumpkin. Just puts a little dots of glitter. All right. So what I would do to put this guy on is a glue dot again, a mini glue dot. In your kit, you're gonna have three amber gems. There's gonna be two small and a big. And the bigger one is what goes in the middle of that. So this kind of squirrely thing goes up here. And in your kit, you'll have, oh, look at that. There's one big one. The big one was meant to go up on your, what is it, your stump of your pumpkin? Pumpkin stump? I feel like a stump is on the bottom. What's the top of the pumpkin called, you guys? I can't remember. Is it a stump? No, it's the top. I think I should know I'm drawing a blank. All right, and then you got your two small ones that are gonna go there, okay? Coming together. Almost done. We gotta trim our little tails. So where's our ribbon scissors? Right over here. All right, Corinne, we'll catch you later, girl. 
A stern. Is that what it's called, Donna? A stern. A stem. A stem. Oh, it, from here, you guys, my eyesight. Remember, I, it looks like stern. It's a stem. Yes, definitely. It's a stem. Good call. See, I was raised on a farm, but you wouldn't know it at that moment in my life. <laughs> All right. Doris says it's a wonderful card. That's what we're going for. All right. Um, is there anything else on this one? I don't know. A stem. Oyster. Yeah, stem. It's a vine. So the vine is the thing in the front, and then the stem is here. Yes, it's a stem. For some reason, I wanted to say a stump, but a stump is like with the mushrooms. <laughs> so I've had lots of mushrooms on my mind lately with like the rustic um, or the um, ringed with nature. So there you guys, that's our gourmet. It's gourmet because there's so many bits and pieces with this one. So you guys got me covered. Yes, it's definitely a stem. All right, so I know we have about two hours, you guys. So if you got to get going, I would have to say the class is pretty much officially done. But for some reason in my head, when I designed the mystery card for last month, I decided to kit up <laughs> a kit <laughs> for myself to make as an added little bonus for tonight. Now, this is I've never done it before. <laughs> I can't say that I ever have. But I thought, well, if I'm making one card, I might as well cut for two, right? Because it's so much easier to cut for two. So in case you guys want to see how I put my mystery card together, I'm going to go for it and show you what I have. So I have, it was a gate fold. And so when you guys, if you want to know the measurements for this, if you just go to mystery card night from September 8th, you can find all the measurements for this card that I'm going to make with you right now. All right, September 8th, go to my calendar of events on cardsbycrispy.com and you can see all the measurements. So you're gonna have the two double mats or the two mats for your front panels here. So um, we're gonna flip them over and I've already stamped my inside, right? So we're gonna just get a little bit glue happy. Now I did show off this card a couple weeks ago or let, maybe it was last week. And we already did the drawing for mystery card night on Monday. So congratulations to, oh, um, Karen Cotton, I know Karen Cotton, and Luann Johnson. Those are our two winners from Mystery Card Night. And um, I haven't mailed your prizes yet, ladies. <laughs> I have um, your cards written out, though, so that's good. Um, so I shared this card um, in the event, um, I think, on the 15th. So I have it photographed, too. And so we're just going to put this together really quick. Just I can use my liquid glue so I can keep wiggling it till I get it centered just right. And then here's our inside. And then we get to get glue happy again. So it's all the same stamps, you guys. This is the other pattern paper that I hadn't used. So that's why I used it in the mystery card. Okay, so then we have a couple mats over here. Yes, the DSP is so pretty, Roxanne. I definitely agree. So glue, 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 glue. All right, so... Let's do glue. You know, as long as I've got my glue bottle open, I like to do as many things as I can. All right, so then we've got, we'll get rid of this one first. So this one is just your white mat. I sponged it. Oh man, it's bigger than, <laughs> this is what I told you guys at the beginning of the video is you should measure your paper first in case it's too big. <laughs> if it's too big, you can cut it without having glue on it. But if you do what I just did, I can show you what to do. So that's why I don't glue too close to the edge. All right, so let's see. This one's gonna go over here. This one's gonna go, I'm gonna put my pumpkin the right way. It's gonna go there. Now, my white is too big. So instead of cutting myself a new black mat, I'm going to cut off a little bit what size is it? It is three and three quarters. So we're going to cut. <laughs> so I don't want to get any glue in my trimmers, right? So I'm going to cut a little bit off of that side. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut a little bit off the other side. And success, I have not hit my glue. And now I can flip it over and try again. And there we go. And now I, I'll just center it between. That looks good to me. All right, I hope I had your measurements right for that and that I just cut my piece wrong. <laughs> the trick with this now is, you guys, when you put this on here, you can't put glue on both sides. You can only put glue on one. And I noticed that when I fold my card, you can see the crack. <laughs> you can see the white paper. You're very welcome, Lou and Johnson. You can see the crack a little bit. So what you can do 
I like to just finagle it a little bit and hold it where I want it, and then I'm gonna re-burnish it. And so now when I hold it flat, it's there's less, right? And so I'm gonna do a little bit on the other side. I'm gonna try to pull it together, and then I'm gonna re-burnish it. And so now when I fold it, I've gotten rid of the crack. <laughs> okay, so this guy's gonna go here, and we're gonna use dimensionals. So I want it to sit right about there. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And just to mix things up, I'm gonna do black on the black over here. So I've got three on the way left side of this piece, and then I've got three close to the fold here. So now I know I'm covered on my design or my dimensionals. And so that's gonna go here. All right. <laughs> now this is the exact same card that we pretty much just finished, you guys. So, well, oh, that's red. That's not good. Hang on, we need brown. So let's flip it over and oh, we'll do with the red. We're gonna do a little bit of brown, red. You know what, The are you guys' fall colors changing yet? Ours just seem like they haven't yet. And I'm waiting for all those oranges and those yellows and those browns to come. And um, I just noticed that I have too much red there. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a little red throughout the whole thing. There we go. Okay, great tips today, Doral says. Yeah, <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> oh, good stuff. All right, um, I'm thinking oh, that I should have ribbon on here somewhere. You know what, I'm gonna go grab the sample card really quick. I'm trying to put this together based off of memory, but I have it over here. about the same so this was the card so we're gonna do this little label thing the exact same way though I'm going to put the dimensionals near the bottom and then have that near there and we're gonna grab our strip and that should all come off as it's one thing here so this you guys, you know you can fold your dimensionals as you if you need them to curve. Oh, Doris says you're getting fall colors in Iowa, not in Missouri yet. Yeah, we haven't gotten much either yet here in Wisconsin. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. All right, so you guys, I didn't peel that top off, right? And so now what I'm gonna do is set this on here. I know I want it right about here. And now I'm gonna take, same thing. We're gonna prep the backs of these guys. So <laughs> we're not gonna lose our leaf our yellow leaf this time in limbo land oh to be stuck between those layers forever that would have been so sad okay so then this one gets glue that will get a little liquid glue and then that don't go too close to the top because part of it's hanging over so now i can pick this up and slide that in here and then my leaf goes next, there. And this one is gonna go over here. And then we used glue dots for this one. Diane said, starting to get fall colors in Michigan. Yeah, Tyler and I drove home from Maryland, what, like last week it was maybe, and nothing seemed like it was turning colors yet. All right, so we got our glue dots on. Haven't seen any fall color leaves in Northern Utah. Lynn said that, okay. So we're gonna stick this guy down in here. And uh, voila, all right, we can trim our tails on that. Made a little tag. All right, I didn't Stella anything. It's always good to give her a little workout. So let's grab her again. We're gonna do our designer series paper leaf. We can do that leaf and that. A little on the stem. So I used rustic metallic dots on this one. So let's grab those. It's always nice to have a sample to look at, isn't it? <laughs> really helps. All right, so grab your tool again, and we're gonna put a small one. I just love putting them on the edge of the banner like that because it just kind of finishes it off. All right, and then we're gonna do one more kind of up there. Hiding up there. Nothing in Florida. Ha, 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 you're funny. Are the palm trees turning colors yet, Penny? 
<laughs> not at all. They never change. All right. So let's put our dimensionals away. Did you guys like having an ad hoc card to make at the end? <laughs> I know that Kelly kind of made a fake mystery card night with you guys a couple weeks ago, right on the 8th when she did class because I was out of town. Um, but did you like seeing the actual card get made? I'm curious if you liked having a bonus card tonight. <laughs> all right, so let's bring them all in. Bring it all together here, you guys. Our gourmet card, our lovely vintage sunflower card. We have our punk, and how am I gonna do this? I gotta hold all five of them at once. Wow, let's see if I get them all in here. All right, we gotta bring him up. So that's what we got for you guys tonight. Whew, a lot of fall colors going on here, you guys. Now my million dollar question is, which do you like the best? Linda says, the more the merrier. And Sherry Stewart says, love the bonus card. So, oh, Linda Bailey, you're very welcome. Um, not turning much in Iowa or Wisconsin. One more, more time with you is always great, Penny Paul. I love it. So look at that gourmet selection of cards, you guys. Wouldn't that make a great little gift to somebody? Like putting all these cards together and making somebody's day as a, a gift. Vintage Sunflower for Luann Johnson. All of them. What a wonderful class. Yay, Rose loved it. Yay. So I would have to pick, oh, you guys, I don't know. They're all great, right, in their own regards, but there's something that is drawing my attention to this one. It just is so warm and welcoming. And Donna Simmer says sunflower as well. Look at that. I do love this one. I love the, the mums on here. This one, I love the full. They're, they're all great. And a lot of people love this pumpkin. So, so much fun, you guys. <laughs> it's like I'm always sad at the end of a class because these cards have been up on display for, what, a month? two months, a week, I don't know, however long. <laughs> and I get to look at them, look at them. And when I finish off a class, then it's like, oh, I got to take them off the board and move on to the next one. Oh, Elizabeth says pumpkin and butterfly cards. Great. Cool, cool. Sherry says the pumpkin too. Mary Hartman says awesome cards. Yeah. Oh, you guys, it was fun. So I think what I'm taking away is that you like having a fifth card. So when I go to design, so you guys, for the mystery card, if you don't know this, if you're new to me, I always make the mystery card based off of what the featured sweet bundle is, just to have one more card in the arsenal for showing you another sample. So that's how that came to be this month is that when I was cutting the paper for it, I'm like, well, I might as well make two kits and make one up and then I can make one with you guys live in class. So yay. All right. So, so Hildy says the gourmet and then the pumpkin, sunflowers and the butterfly. So all great layouts. So you guys all in all, like, if you're needing some inspiration to start making some cards at home with your own stamps, ink, and paper, hopefully that you've got some inspiration and ideas. Krista says she loves them all. Uh, Linda Hall missed the first one. Yeah, you guys, reminder, if you missed anything, came in late, you can always catch the replay as soon as I hit the end now button. It takes a minute or two for it to load, and then you can always catch the replay. Um, Becky loves having the extra card. Yay. On Saturday morning is when I would normally publish, and I plan to publish um, this class, and then Ink, Paper, Scissors will be on the Saturday. I always publish them on Saturday morning. I do that because we publish the Technique Thursday to YouTube, but going forward in October, you guys, I'll be live in YouTube, and then I'll share the links to Facebook right away. So Wanda says, love them all. Okay, so we're not done. Um, we need to do some announcements of some prizes. Woo! Okay, so... I need to show off, um, well, first things first. So I usually give away a stamp set um, for the featured bundle. Uh, I didn't do the featured bundle this month because it was not available. So I pulled in the next thing that I thought was nice, and that is the Leaves of Holly. So if you're in my Cards by Christine VIP customer group, then I, I think I forgot to share the video but I threw it out there right before class. And so anybody who's in my customer VIP group, and to be in my customer VIP group, it's if you place orders for Stampin' Up! product. Yes, Prize Patrol 2, Laura. I, I have that in my head. Um, if you um, place orders to get product from me, um, or even and the ink, paper, scissors counts too because you get product in those classes, that's how, or if you're on my team, that's how you can be invited to the Cards by Christine VIP group. I'm not very diligent at double checking as soon as I have a new customer to add them right away because you have to be friends on Facebook. 
and half the time we're not friends and then I have to send a friend request and then it's a rigmarole and then I forget. So if you are a new customer to me, customer to me and to place an order um, to get a class for free or just place an order and you're not in my VIP group, make sure we're friends on Facebook, send me that friend request and then send me a note. Say, add me please to the VIP group. I will do that. And so what I do is I do a drawing and because I didn't share it till tonight, I'll give it some time. I'll give it till next week. Anybody who shares that they... Um, they post that they shared the the showcasing video. I'll do a drawing, and we're gonna do the leaves of holly for half off. Um, the seedling class, Marsha Kulbert, is on October fourth. It's at one p.m. and it's a Tuesday, and it'll be via YouTube Live. Okay. Uh, so again, if you have placed an order with me and send me a friend request, make sure we're friends, and then I can invite you to my VIP group. So. Cool. All right. So I'm going to flip the camera down and show you that one with the customer, one of my customers. So Melanie Foy won last month. She got the Cottage Rose bundle at half off. Um, I need to do something because um, I can't remember who won Sun Prince in June, but um, whoever it was that won it had it already. And they said to pass it on to somebody else. So I might pick two winners and one could have their, the first winner would have their choice of Sun Prince and the second winner would have the Holly Berry, I think is what I'll do. Okay, so you guys, I also, on the day that we got 15% off on our stamps, I did a little thing that said, if you placed a 75, oh, I don't remember what my rule was. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know if it was 50 or if it was 75. Huh. Hmm. Well, I pulled names of people who placed orders, and I know they were over 50-ish because um, mo every one of these... I even put my name in there. I shouldn't have, but um, if number two wins, I won't take a prize. I'll um, pick somebody else. But um, funny thing, it's, they were generally over an amount to get a free class. And so I'll still count everybody. So we have Lynn Beasley, Judy Bobo, Linda Hunt, Wendy Minowski, Donna Jarman, and Mary Lemke. Um, my name is number two, but if we pick number two in random number generator, we'll pick somebody else. But isn't it amazing? I got my, I got number two as my <laughs> favorite number. Okay. So what I said is these people, whoever wins would have their choice between perfect pomegranate or quiet meadow. Okay. So I'm going to do a random number generator, you guys. And I always am worried when I pull this up to see what it is, but it's usually cards by Christine. Um, Feline, I will let you know as soon as we get off the live. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go to random number generator. And again, um, we're gonna take me out and we'll do all the rest. So we have six people. Da -da -da -da, drum roll, guys. Ready for it, ready for it. Okay, I'm gonna hit the word generate and whatever number pops up. Number two, Judy Bobo. Isn't that funny? I would have won, you guys. I would have won a stamp set, but <laughs> I can't win because I did the contest. So Judy Bobo, we made you number two. And so you get your pick. So Judy, I don't know if you're watching or not, but you can let me know. And I'll include this um, stamp set in your next class that you get from me. Um, either Perfect Pomegranate or Quiet Meadow. Your choice, okay, Judy? So you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So congratulations to Miss Judy Bobo. All right. Oh, and it fell on the floor. These stamp cases are super slippery. All right. I'm watching for any comments to come through because the one thing I forgot to do is give everybody a number who placed an order. So you guys are going to have to dilly-dally chat for just a moment in time. Well, I put numbers next to everybody um, who placed an order. So I do a, um, a door prize with every class, and it's based off of people who place orders. So those that are new to me, um, if you place an order to get a class for free, it means you've used a host code. And when you use a host code, it helps me to get the supplies that I need for class. And sometimes I don't know how much I need or I don't need, and so I generally end up with extra supplies at the end of a catalog cycle. And then what I do is I use those prizes to give away as door prizes um, once the catalog retires because I don't use a retired product. Um, oh, thanks, Laura. I don't use a retired product when I am making up my card kits to share with you guys. So that's a little bit about what the door prize is all about. So I'm up to 14. And I'm going to keep going on this list really quick. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
22, 23, 24. Wowzers, 24, you guys. Okay, that's a lot. I'm excited, so that's great. So we're gonna flip the camera down and I'm gonna put 24 in here and we're gonna click the word generate. It's gonna tell me a number, number 17. 17 is Tammy Steckling. All right, girlfriend, you're a lucky duck. I think you've won a door prize in the past too. So the thing with my door prize, I have one condition, is that I do not mail them out separately. They go out with the next class that you get from me. And generally people who are taking my classes are getting more classes in the future. And that usually, that works out great. So Tammy, I will make a little card for you. And when you have your next class, which probably is fun folds, fun folds are going to be mailing out next Thursday, you guys. I think Thursday, that's the plan, Thursday or Friday. Um, so uh, they'll be mailing out Thursday. So what um, will happen, Tammy, is I'll put a door uh, prize in with your package. So yay, congratulations to Tammy. Yay, I always love when people win things. Hi, Jennifer Jones. All right, so woohoo. Um, we have some winners, so awesome, awesome, awesome. So again, for that Leaves of Holly, you guys, this is the, the bundle that is gonna go for half off in my VIP group. I literally, at like 5.45, I shared the link, uh, um, a post that you can say in there, uh, that you um, shared that video. And you could have shared that video way back in September, like early September or the end of August after it aired. I just wanna get your name in there so I know who to put in for the drawing. So Penny Powell wants the fun folds. Fun folds are winding down, you guys. So I know the class isn't for two weeks, but I am capping it at 100. It would be my biggest class to date. I've had about 496s um, over the last few months. I think it started off, yeah, 96, I, there was like Texture Chic, Abigail Rose, and then there was another class, oh, my Kellogg Launch Party. All three of those were all 96ers. So just to say we've done 100, I'm doing 100, and you guys, I'm already at 92. <laughs> so yeah, if you wanna get on the fun folds, don't wait. <laughs> um, all right, hi, Stacy Burns. All right, other thing too, it is the end of the Stampin' Up! year, you guys, and I'm trying to finish as strong as I can with my team. And if there is anybody that is not currently a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that would love to join the Be Happy Stampers, I'm putting this out there for a few gals on my team. They would be silvers if they had somebody join their team. So you'd be helping them, you'd be helping me, and you'd be helping the team. And I, I think there's about four people, four lovely ladies on my team, who if they had somebody join their team, uh, take the um, take you know buy you know get the starter kit. It's a hundred and twenty five dollars worth of product for ninety nine dollars plus tax. You get free shipping on it. You get a pass paper pumpkin kit. You get um, catalogs and like some business supplies, and um, and you would have the opportunity to join the Be Happy Stampers. And we are an amazing community of stampers that we love and support each other, and we share ideas, and it's just so fun to have that camaraderie. And so you'd also be helping somebody on the team uh, that. Um, would go silver, be silver into uh, next year. So um, if anybody is um, thinking about that or wants more information, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to help you out with that. So, um, and if you're on somebody on my team, I treat you just like you're on my, my team. You know, like everybody's the big happy family. <laughs> if you guys can't tell about me, I'm a big happy family kind of person. So, all right. Um, Carla Lake, I just saw your note that you want the fun fold. So just know that I got you on the list right now. Um, we can connect later on if you want to do an order or if you want to pay for it. I'm good with that. Um, if I missed anybody, if I didn't comment on somebody who wrote something, I might have missed the comment. It's always great to follow up with me with an email or a message. And if you're not getting emails from me generally, um, make sure you subscribe to my emails and my newsletter by going to my website. And, um, I don't know, that's it. If you're watching the replay, you guys, thank you for watching the replay. And just know, I don't always check questions when you're watching the replay. So if you need something answered, please reach out to me directly as well. Uh, email, text message, Facebook message is probably the best way to get a hold of me. So you can call me, but I don't always listen to my messages, right? So if you still call me, that's great. I'll return a phone call. Uh, just uh, know that you can follow up with a text message. All right. 
Woo! You guys, we had a great class. Two hours, 15 minutes, and that was with a bonus card, right? So we would have really kept it to two hours. Um, I think this one's a great one. So make sure, Cheryl Thomas, sign you up for Fun Folds. You betcha. So Fun Folds, um, Cheryl Thomas, is $23. Um, you can send that over. I'll get you signed up. Um, this was a good one, you guys. I think this is one that is um, one that you want to make sure you share with your friends and family because they will get lots of ideas and tips. <laughs> um, Vicki Thomason. Awesome. I'm seeing your comment come through here. So before I, I let you guys go, I'm going to write your name down, Vicki. Um, reach out to me, Vicki, with an email or a text message or a Facebook message, something just to follow up with me How if you want to place an order or if you want to pay for it for $23, whichever. So, but I do, oh, hi, Joanne Kitts. You're just tuning in right at the end, I think. <laughs> We're just wrapping up, Joanne. So, you, Joanne, you got these card kits to go, so you want to make sure you watch the video. It's good. So, you guys, share this one. It was a good one. I had fun. Um, Karen Cotton loved the cards. Yay! Tali said it was a great class. Terrific evening, Lynn Beasley. Thanks for sharing, Laura Sullivan. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome, Sandy Wicklander. It was a good one. I had fun. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun watching. All right. So I will be live tomorrow at some point. My mom and I are not going to Door County. I don't know why we made the executive decision to work, but we decided to stick around and make cards and um, take my clothes over to Autumn's Closet, donate them, and get an extra key at Fleet Farm instead of going off up to Door County. We decided to stay. So I will be live tomorrow at some point, you guys, doing a YouTube video on that fifth card. Okay, so watch for that on YouTube. Um, that would be awesome. Oh, hi, Angela Knutson. Thanks for sharing quite late in the night, but you're here. Yay. All right, you guys. I think that's it. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to everybody. We will see you later. Love you. Bye.